What's up, everybody out there? This is your boy Dev of War Room Sports. And this is Tate from War Room Sports. Alright, we're here to welcome you guys to take a listen to episode number 214 of the greatest sports podcast since sliced bread. Um, in this episode, uh, we have our usual segment with Fred Perdue of heavyinthegames.com. He's going to come on and give us his Big Ten and Big 12 uh, previews and predictions. The college football season is almost here, so you don't want to miss that. Uh, we talk a little bit about the antitrust lawsuit led by former UCLA star Ed O'Bannon. Uh, the judge actually ruled in their favor earlier this week, so we'll give you our take on that. We talk about the Tony Stewart situation, uh, what happened at the dirt track. It was very, very tragic. Rest in peace to Kevin Ward Jr. Uh, we'll give you our take on that whole situation as well. We talk a little bit about NFL preseason, NBA offseason, off and a whole lot more. So make sure you guys sit back, relax, Take a listen to episode number 214 of The War Room. Peace. Peace out. Peace out. Blog Talk Radio. Billy Ray Valentine. Welcome to The War Room. We got Ted, Kim, Jimmy, PJ, B. Austin, the Hot Block Commander. How you want to end up one or two hour show to keep the brain running with the premise of talk sports on a national level? Both with the topic, sort of like the rubber, when it's game time, they like the fat five doing prime time. Sports conglomerates speak their minds a little bit. For sports medicine and sports veterans and great. The 4 for 26, so the war ain't can wait. It's the war room with five nights at the round table. Five silly guys, the first of five and educated. Check one. Check two. What's good, sports fans? The War Room Sports Gang is back at the table, so of course that means you are once again live in the War Room, brought to you by War Room Sports on the WRS Podcast Network. As usual, I'm one of your hosts, Devin McMillan. I'm joined at the round table by two of my brothers from different mothers, Jimmy the Blueprint Williams and the boy B. Austin. NFL preseason is in week two. Anyway. <laughs> And there's been uh, some some court rulings and a tragic event this week in sports, and we'll discuss it all. So do us a favor. Make sure you join us right now in the JW Philly Realty chat room at blogtalkradio.com slash the war room. Or, you know, you can join us on Facebook or Twitter at War Room Sports so you can discuss uh, the stories there with us as well. Um, you can also call in directly when we open up the Digital Extreme Tech Hotline. That number, as it is every week, is 323 Zero zero one two. But before we get started, you know we got to remind you guys to check out some of the great shows on the War Room Sports Podcast Network. Uh, you can get there from our main site, warroomsports.com, or you can get there directly at wrspn.com. You'll find shows such as the Broad Street Line with uh, Roy Burton and Chris Domingo. They're giving you the national sports take, but they're giving you a heavy dose of what's going on uh, in Philadelphia, if, from, if you're from the Philly area, you'll love that show. Um, you'll find Tissue in the Tape, if you're a hip-hop head. Uh, Savai Davis and Phil Wilson are the host of that show. Uh, hip-hop heads to the core. So if you love hip-hop, listen to Tissue in the Tape. You won't regret it. Um, we got After Further Review with the mayor. Um, we got Pop Spot Sports Radio with Chuck Modiano and, and Dr. Eddie Moore. Um, they dig into the social aspects of sports. Um, that's a good one, especially with all the stuff going on in and around sports right now, you know, socially. Um, and, and we got a whole lot more, so you can just check the listings as well at FatsRadio.com, P-H-A-T-Z, Radio.com, for the air times of all your favorite WRSPN sports shows, which are also syndicated on that network, um, including our show, The War Room. We're over there Sundays and Tuesdays at 3 p.m. What's good, generals, man? It's a lot of crazy stuff happening, not just in sports. In the world, we got the whole Mike Brown thing going on. Uh, now I see uh, videos popping up on the Internet left and right of police brutality. and It's getting crazy out here, man. I think the line Yo. has been drawn in the sand. <laughs> it's about to get crazy in America, man. Guard your grill, knuckle up. Mm-hmm. Oh, bang, bang, anywhere, dang. You got the Yo, cyber panther threatening the cops. Shout out to anonymous. <laughs> yeah. Yo, I'm afraid of them. I'm gonna keep it a bean. Like I, yo, I, I'm afraid of the IRS and Anonymous. The only two people I'm afraid of in this world. Like, 
Cause, <laughs> yo, they they about that life. They follow through, and you know, but the whole situation is sad, man. Our, our country, man, it's it's just terrible, man. Like, yo, all I can say is, um, white supremacy is alive and well, um, you know, in a free Palestine. No, <laughs> no, I definitely, I I definitely want to touch on this just real brief because yeah. there are two groups of people in this country that don't value black life or black culture. One of them is white supremacists who kind of have an influence in setting up this country's infrastructure and institution, like it or not, what's here, which is why we see what's going on today, and young black males. Hey, B. Austin, I know where you're going with this. I know where Mm -hmm. you're going with this. That's the the whole uh, David Banner approach, but, yo, I think it's deeper than that. I don't think – I think it's more than two entities. I think – Damn near nobody values it, and that's the sad part. It's more than just those two entities. Nobody values uh, black lives. Black, young, black, black women, black women as twisted as as they are, black women value black oh, lives. No, sir, no, some of them don't either. Though. Let's keep it a bean. Like some of them don't either because they 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 look down on their own. Like some of them don't value it either. That's the sad part. I'm not saying that you know it's a good thing, but the sad part is no one values black life. Like it's not even just black young black males or you know um you know the white supremacists or you know people in power no one really values black life which is sad now you do have those that do but i'm talking about for the most part you know some yeah, of us do right. some people try in to general. make a difference some people try to make change or maybe, in general, maybe we can folk. agree that there are a large large contingents in in each group of people you know that don't value it so i think like what jimmy's saying it's not just the two, but you can find groups of people within mm-hmm. every group who every are going to feel the same way. So, but I mean, yeah, but yeah. this is this is what this this is a long thing. This has been taught. This has been going on for years, man. And I ain't Yo. trying to get on my um Dr. Cooper Ivy League show, man. But this is real. Shout out to David Banner. You can't make rap songs, but you're an intelligent dude. And I respect Yo, I mean, David Banner got some nice I, songs. Listen. He ain't got a nice album, but he got some good songs. <laughs> my man, my man, Mr. Butler tried to tell y'all a long time ago. The hunt is on. And you're to pray. And you're to pray. He tried to yeah. tell y'all. Shout that's, to Mr. that's all I'm Mr. saying. Mr. Butler was a prophet, man. And for those who know who yeah. Mr. Butler is, F-O-H, man. <laughs> uh, nice for, times, plate, Keisha. Yeah, let's fix him a big plate, and he'll be cool. He'll drop that knowledge on you. But look, man, let's get into some sports, because I know some people tuned in like, the hell? We want to hear some sports, so let's talk about a little bit of sports, man. Let's talk let's about talk what about, happened let's this talk about week. Them shit. <laughs> Why you people, and I did say you people, were on the grind. And while you're on the grind, as usual, is brought to you by DirecTV. If you'd like a better TV experience than cable has to offer, including that NFL Sunday ticket, which you will need by the end of this month, go to our website, warroomsports.com, click on the DirecTV logo, order yourself a better TV experience at a discounted War Room Sports sign-up rate. Secret for you people out there. Secret. If you've never had DirecTV and you go order DirecTV now, you'll get this year of the NFL Sunday ticket absolutely free. The NFL Sunday ticket ain't cheap, so that's just a little secret for you guys out there. So if you call yourself a sports fan, you got to have direct TV. Fellas, you know how everybody has these joint Yo. practices during the NFL uh, preseason and NFL training camp. Uh, Cowboys and Raiders practice together out in Oxnard, California, uh, it was supposed to be a non-contact, well, not non-contact, but, you know, it was a drill where they weren't, they weren't supposed to be tackling. Uh, some things heated up. Uh, cornerback Morris Claiborne from the Cowboys ended up slamming the Raiders tight end, uh, Michael Rivera. Um, I guess he said he did it because dude kept putting his hands on him or whatever, but he tackled him, and they were near the sideline where all the Raiders fans were because that's another training camp thing now where, you know, all the fans can come out and watch. So a big team scuffle breaks out, but while they're over near the sideline, a fan hits uh, Clay. I'm sorry, hits uh, one of Dallas's defenders on his back twice. I think it was the dude Webb, B.W. Webb, hit him in his back twice with his hand, and then somehow got a hold of a helmet and hit the dude in the back with a helmet. It like, hey. what's going on here? Like, they're they're asking questions of whether Webb should be suspended. Because he swiped at the fan, you know, once he realized he was being hit. So they're wondering if 
he should be suspended. Ayello from the NFL said they're not going to. That would be more of a team issue. The Cowboys said they're not going to. But I'm wondering, fellas, why there's even a question. Like, are these fans getting off easy these days? Uh, definitely. And I don't even blame the fans. I blame the situation that's being set up, as as Jimmy often alludes to. Now, at this point, it's 24-7, 365 access to all of these sports. And they're just, everybody, the way you have to look at the world is everybody is a content creator and everybody is a reporter. And businesses and brands are finding ways to capitalize on, on that. So now we're selling practice. Like, we're literally selling, the NFL is selling you NFL practices, which does several bad things. One, it creates a situation and a scenario where things like this can happen. Two, it dumbs down the product because now, let's face it, like, you know, even though these are professional athletes, they're playing more to the crowd than they are to developing the techniques they need to have and learning the plays and the skill sets they'll need to carry with them into the season. So I think it's bad on a lot of different levels. Um, Man, just I'm I'm still not going to – I'm not going to give this fan a pass, though, man, because, first of all, like, people are just – I mean, I've I've grown up all my life a big fan of the sports teams, but, yeah, I I understand that. But people are taking this stuff too seriously because now you're jumping into fights you know, that your team is having, look, two minutes later, these guys are going to be shaking hands and, and, and doing whatever, and you're that fan out there that, that, that's jumping into something that's not even that serious but risking yourself in the process over some people yes. who could care less about you had they seen yes. you on the street getting your ass whooped. So I don't understand yes. how years, your love yes. for years, a sports years team later. Yo, I'm a diehard fan, but I don't understand how somebody's love for a sports team can have them jumping in the physical altercation with here, here, dudes here's wearing robot equipment. Like, well, first off, sense. first off, right, you're talking about a Raiders fan, so the IQ isn't that high to begin with. <laughs> Shout out to my man Scott Hugh Kevin. He's the only intelligent Raiders fan I know. But the fact that he likes the Raiders, I got to question that too. But shout to Scott Hugh Kevin, the homie. But, uh, at the end of the day, man, you're talking about a Raiders fan. Now, getting to your point, we already know that the term fan comes from fanatic, and it's crazy. Um, yeah. In my own personal experience, the older I get, the less of a fanatic I become because, you, you know, these are grown men. Like, yo, what's going on in your life that you re- you ready to rumble for a team? And like Dev said, like, yo, especially these days with free agency, you might even be on your team in two weeks. Hey, you might get tra- I mean, mean the the but listen, Jim, after the practice in the that. parking lot, if it's some cowboy fans teeing off on you and they're walking to their cars after practice or walking to their dorms or wherever they're going, they're not going to help you. They're going to yeah, laugh man. at you like, yo, for being out in the parking exactly. lot acting like dickheads. I mean, <laughs> this goes back, yo, it reminds me of the Eminem song, Stan, man. Like, that's the realest thing ever. And it's funny because this is this is cultural. This is bigger than just sports. It's cultural with our celebrities, our entertainers. Yo, I was watching an interview today with um, what's the, the dude's name that plays Fritz on uh, Scandal. I guess I watch scandals to so judge your mother. But um <laughs> and he was talking about like the the treatment of fans and he said his whole career he's amazed at how fans treat him. He said it's to the point where um people walk up to him based upon the show and like will cuss him out like it's real. Like why would you do that to her? Like people be ready right. to go in on him. He said he went to a restaurant and the chick wouldn't serve him wow. based upon a character <laughs> on a TV show. Yeah, but my point is like people, like people, people have <laughs> people have lost touch with reality, man. Like they they worship they worship people that really don't even exist. It's like me and Dev were talking before when we it, going back to the whole scandal thing. Like yo, people love Olivia Pope. They can care less about the you know the actress, but they love Olivia. Right. People worship right. people that aren't even real these days. And when you take it back to sports, like fandom is is just is just out of control. And now that people have access to them via social media and things of that nature. If a, if a person replies to something they say, like, the staleness kicks in right there. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean I've heard Pope, celebrities Olivia say it. That's crazy. Just going to talk to black man, but that's a whole other. But that shows whole you. Other but I've, heard, I've heard actual celebrities and, and ball players say that every once in a while. They'll go on and speak to some of their fans because they know once they speak to them one time, they got them locked in forever. And, yeah. you know, yeah. it, it just goes to, it's, it's it's psychological, man. People don't have anything going on in their lives, man. Like, I could care less. I'm not rumbling for nobody no, on none of my squad. Man. Not enough dad. Not enough dad. Yo, 
And then when they do got dads, they dads is effed up because they dads is right behind them, ready to rumble. Yeah, well, uh, I, yo, I, you, yo, you, that, that, like that's crazy. Often, I, 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 think, that, I think it's not enough dads, but I got a new theory. It, it's, it's enough dads. It's not enough men. Because even those that have dads, they ain't real men. But that's a whole other story, too. And then with that whole actor thing, though, that just shows you, you could take that as a compliment. Like, I'm that good of an actor that I'm playing that thing so well that you just believe. Like, you you don't uh-huh, like yeah. me because of a, a role that I'm playing. Or you love me Yo, because like, of a role that I'm playing. So you're doing your There's nobody job. that, you know, that I could see or play the role that I just would, like, dislike them personally. Like, I mean, <laughs> you know. Yo, there were people who, who, there were people who didn't like, um, damn, what's my man's name? Joaquin Phoenix. Who, like, who's that and bad guy in the movie that you'd be like, oh. yo, F that boy. Yo, after Gladiator, I, I people didn't front, like Joaquin I ain't Phoenix. Front, brother. <laughs> I ain't gonna front. I don't like Joaquin Woodbine. Well, it ain't because Yo, he's doing you, a good job. Yeah, you, you, you like him for It ain't because of no character he played, though. Yeah. <laughs> you, you probably don't like him because he can't act. Not because he can act. <laughs> yeah. <He's> terrible. <laughs> Yo, shout out to, Yo, to uh, Shadu in, uh, in the chat room. He said when Roots came out, I didn't like a lot of them. <laughs> no <laughs> doubt. <laughs> that, 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 that's the outlier. That's for different like reasons. Yeah. Andy. Yo, his name was Massa, Massa Reynolds, man. Yeah, I ain't mess with Massa Reynolds either. Like, uh, that, yo, he Dad, cool. yo, I was t- I was talking to somebody the other day, right? And they didn't believe me, right? I was telling mm-hmm. them about like the grade school we went to. We went to mm-hmm. a, a private school for African Americans, and I told them that watching year. Roots was part of our curriculum. And they thought every I was year. lying. I was like, yo, every year. I was like, yo, this we is know lines to part roots. of our curriculum. <laughs> like this minutes, we know lines to roots. It was like, they was like, you're making that up. I was like, no. I said we didn't sing a national anthem. We sung "Lift Every Voice and Sing." That's part of the curriculum. Like that's right. what we were taught. And they thought right. I was making that up, but that's a whole other story. So, you already know my opinion on um, masculinity. <laughs> <laughs> I got indoctrinated at a young age. I was forced to watch it. I uh, know. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that was class for us. Like y'all going to roots class. <laughs> we had we had roots class at one o'clock after lunch. Roots class. All right. Well, let's keep it with the uh, let's keep it with the Cowboys. Um, cornerback Orlando Scandrick. He's been popped by the NFL four games for uh, violating the the league's PED policy, and the drug that he tested positive for was N- MDMA which is also known as ecstasy or molly. So he popped molly. Pop the molly he got caught. Um, what do you guys think of that? Because actually, like, a lot of people, like, his story seems big, but they said out of the 104 people suspended for PEDs in the NFL, he's the 21st player who tested positive for popping molly. So this is never touch the big button. Oh, that girl is... <laughs> Why? It, Yo, why? My question to you guys is why. I can explain why. I can explain why you, if you want to. You know exactly why. I, I know they, exactly yo, why. Yo, they did it all for the nookie. Well, because they, they did it all for that. He said hot, it, um, in Mexico went. he was with his ex girlfriend, and I believe his ex girlfriend is Drea, right? From uh, yeah, uh, basketball, basketball wise. Wise. Oh. Yeah, one of them jumps. I, I, I've heard oh. you know she can make do things. Snapper. That yeah. But they said she she kind of pressured him to put uh, to pop a pill into his his uh, cocktail that they were drinking, and and that's why he tested positive. My question is this: You're a world class athlete. You're in a league that tests for drugs, performance enhancing drugs, what have you. Why are you putting anything in your body that you don't know, you know what it is? Because exact because some woman told you to do it. Like I don't understand now, these dudes, man. I totally agree with you, but let me put it let me let me let me let I've me seen Dre though. Right? I've seen Dre. Let me let me uh, yeah, yeah. I've seen the tape. I mean but up. listen though, here's he my was thing. already in Mexico with us, so he ain't need to do that. You already But here's my point though. How many times, right, have you been about to, you know, do the damage and yo, you just throw all <laughs> all logic out the window because 'cause you're not thinking with the right head. Like that So happens, basically bro. Jim, you talking about like pop this pill don't put on that condom. What you doing? Like that yeah, kind of stuff. you know what I'm, you know what I'm hitting at. But I'm just saying, like, one extra uh, we don't, pump we don't, we don't need oh, it. Yo, whip me off the stick, and I'm not repeating that. <laughs> <laughs> that was silly, man. That was silly, man. 
But yeah, I'm just saying that's what it comes down to. Like, yo, men men have a weakness when it comes to the opposite sex. It's just, and that's the reality. Like, it's not all jokes aside. That's just the reality. I mean, it's been happening since the beginning of time. For those that believe yo, in, you know, I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie to you, uh, Jimmy. You know, we we often joke about each other's taste in uh, in yam in yam farmage, and uh, we all yeah. have an intersection of, of a certain type of soil. That we like to till But uh, you know at, at certain points it diverges Now by all accounting Drea is not My type But she does look Like she's something special I'm not saying she yeah. is something special But she does look yeah. Like she's something special And Orlando Scandrick Seems like the type <laughs> of dude Where uh, he hasn't had Too many Dreas in his experience so when he got him a Drea, he, he didn't really he didn't know what he was in for, man. He didn't know. All I'm saying he didn't is, know what he all I'm saying is, as a man, everybody knows that you know you you make mistakes when it comes to that, man. So you know, I totally still think that you know he's he's an idiot because at the end of the day, he has look, a lot to lose. But yeah, he, he, you know, I, I I can relate. Yeah. Would you say be awesome? Just sure. one more. No, I mean I ain't gonna repeat that. Yo, just one more. Po- now, Orlando, <laughs> if you need some counseling, if you need some counseling, brother, I was I was very very uh, experienced in the art of in the art of war and loving in a uh, in an HBCU environment. You're supposed to have her take the pill, and you take the blue pill. That's the Viagra, not the. So not since the, since he don't know the rules, since he don't know the rules of play of them. And and I know a Raiders lot of fans fan. I know a lot of people don't want to hear this, and I, I dislike all the Cowboys, but anyway, the fact of the matter is when you play for the Cowboys, it's going to become a bigger story than it probably would, would anyway. If you play for the Jaguars, <laughs> this wouldn't really made the news like that. You know what I'm saying? Yo, so yo, you, yo, you got to think about that. You got to think about that as well. You probably approve it. Well, Jerry him Jones being a cowboy, missed time, he's lucky Jerry he wasn't Jones like, missed time those pitchers. He missed time those. He, he knew this was going to happen. And he tried to time those pitchers coming out, but he mistimed it. That's what happened. Because <laughs> uh, uh, he's the king of drawing attention to himself to keep it off his players. Right. Yo, we need uh, like a we uh, need a breaking news uh, sound bite or something for the show. So we got to work on that. I know um, Rob Manford was elected MLB commissioner. Um, he's the uh, Baseball, he's the COO um, of Major League Baseball. Well, now he's the commissioner. So, shout out to Rob Manfred. Uh, Bud Selig will be out of there, and Rob Manfred will be uh, replacing him. All right. But so anyway. Still case. The needle. <laughs> anyway, Orlando Scandrick, man. <laughs> I'm not really sorry for you, but y'all hear about this one? The Raptors have been fined $25,000 by the NBA for comments that Drake made at his concert uh, <laughs> last week. Now, Kevin Durant was at his concert, and we all know that Drake not only is a rapper, but he's a team and amb- he's a global ambassador for the Toronto Raptors. So technically, he's a global literally, for the you're, a, you're an employee of this team, so you can't make – public pitches you can't make private pitches to players and this is what he said to him at the concert at the end of the concert he said before we leave i just want to show one of my brothers something pause that drake told to the crowd you know my brother kevin durant and of course he's his brother because drake is the drake of life like lebron is the drake of the nba um he said you know my brother kevin durant was kind enough to come to the show tonight and watch us i just want him to see what would happen if he came to play in Toronto. Let him know what would happen. So everybody gives him a standing ovation. They start chanting KD, KD, KD. The league said, nah, that's tampering. So they, they banged the Raptors with a $25,000 fine. Y'all mad? Or is it cool? I think that's. I think that was calculated as a cost of doing business. It's hilarious. It's a cost of doing business. Yo, it's a cost of doing business. It put that on their marketing budget, man. 
Fuckers never yeah, that. If he signs, then they got off. You know, that's a nice little yeah. price to pay. Hold up. Hold <laughs> my phone. Rock stars and 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 major celebrities used to be cool. Like they used to be kind of thorough, or at least give off the impression. Like a lot of these current stars are. Yo, They're but I think it's all, yo, a lot of them here. always been weirdos, B. Austin. I know what you're saying. There was more, they seem to be cooler, like, no. whether it be the rappers, the actors, but they've always been some weirdos. Like, you wasn't going to go hang out with I Kwame, was but you? But he's Richard <laughs> Rodgers. Like, he's saying, look, watch me, watch. Hey, everybody cheer for me, dick eating KD. <laughs> I mean, how on your wood? KD at the you, 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 you wasn't going to hang out, like, you know. With Kwame, was you? Like, you, you know what I mean? Like, there's always been weirdos, man. <laughs> <laughs> you said the, the, the weirdos are just winning right now, that's all. He <laughs> said the boy Kwame, though. Yo, I'm going to tell you why that's funny, though. Because Kwame waited until he was, like, damn near 50 to start gangster rapping. The last the time I heard from Kwame, he was talking about killing people. <laughs> Yo. Yo. I mean, it is, it is, but I understand what you're saying, though. You're looking like the old school, like... <laughs> You know, my man Frank Sinatra was gangster, and he straight was singing. Like, so I mean, but it, Yo, I get what you're saying. Trying, but the weirdos are just winning right now. It's always been there. Try to hang with uh, Biz Markie or somebody. Yeah, he try to hang with Biz Markie. <laughs> Yo, Frank Sinatra. Like, Biz Mark is a go at all, huh? So go off. All right, so um, <laughs> that's Drake for you. I mean, he would have done that if he didn't have anything to do with the rap- Raptors, because he just wants everybody to be his friend. Um, Ben Roethlisberger. I don't know if you guys heard because we never really talked about it on the show. A few weeks ago, his former uh, teammate Emmanuel Sanders, who's now a receiver for the Denver Broncos, had said that Peyton Manning is a far better leader than uh, Ben Roethlisberger. So you know they've been pressing Emmanuel Sanders about this for the last few weeks, and he keeps saying like, "I stand by my comments. Like I'm not trying to." disrespect Ben or anything like that. I'm just saying that Peyton Manning is a better leader as far as, you know, staying after practice to work to work with the receivers, watching film with them and all that kind of stuff. So Ben <laughs> finally says something about it, and he's saying that his feelings aren't hurt that he said it, but his feelings are a little bit hurt that, you know, when Emmanuel Sanders told everybody that he wasn't trying to hurt Ben Roethlisberger's feelings, he said it to the media and not to him. Quote, Yo, I know he told some other off, guys, you know I love Ben. I didn't mean it like that. I wish he would have reached out to me and just say that, and I would have been fine with it. Whether he meant I, it or not, it hurt in a sense that I tried so hard to keep him here last year and always was supporting him. When he's down in practice, I always talk to him. Yo, Yo is Ben being first off, shout, out, shout out to, uh, shout out to Jim McCarthy, right? Shout out to Jim McCarthy, okay? But I just got to say, man, like I look at Ben completely different after this, like, he hurts your feelings? Are you serious? So he's coming off mad Tresvani. The man gave his opinion. Yo, you're coming off mad Tresvani. He hurt my feelings because he... Yo, he don't, yo I will never say out loud another grown man hurt my feelings, man. F-O-H. <laughs> 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 yo, 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 yo. Like, yo, that, how you that? Yeah, you, yo, can even, maybe, you can even maybe, come up with a more we, macho way to say maybe that. Maybe we <laughs> collectively are wrong for the way we approach our masculinity and manhood because, I, yo, these, these stories, like, I'm with you. Like, I can't say stuff like that in private, let alone public. Like, I can't, he hurt me. You hurt me. Why didn't you talk to me? <laughs> He hurt me. In person. No. He hurt me. It was my ear. What? Yo, yo, I I, I can't look at Ben the same no more. Pause. But I thought Ben was like cut from the same. I thought Ben was only built for Cuba links, but he's definitely not. Like, he's one of these new dudes, man. My man said he hurt me. No, I would have told, I would have grabbed the microphone, pause. And said, yo, he's Emmanuel Sanders. Have y'all ever known a thorough black dude named Emmanuel? Come on, <laughs> yo. Emmanuel <laughs> Sanders. Yo, real talk, bro. Like, Ben, come on, Ben. Like, Ben, do you work out to this kind of music, Ben? <clears throat> I can picture Ben like, doing on, curls right now. He's doing bicep <laughs> curls with that. <laughs> ben be on the treadmill listening to this, yo. When I'm alone in my room, sometimes I stare at the Here wall and then the back of my... 
Come on, man. When I need love, yeah, playing like, yo, yo, you're Ben Roethlisberger. That like, yo, you that took, you you took really yams, man. That like, come on, man. Incident when we yeah. saw that happen in that game. Yeah, when Rashard Mendenhall, like, you know, took his Mannheim, and now it looks completely different. <laughs> <laughs> he liked it. He liked it. All right, Damn, man. Ben. <laughs> so, Ben, come on, man. Seriously. You, you know what, what, what you get for that. <laughs> you know what you get for that, <laughs> yeah. man. Of course. Shout out to the TV. Try to send you the tape in the chat room. That's the baby. Jojo. He hurt me That's on his jersey. Jo- <laughs> he hurt me. <laughs> nah, he hate me. He, he hurt, hurt me. He hurt me. <laughs> he hurt right, me. Well, like, come on, look, man. We got a lot of birthday shout outs to give out. So that's what happened Yo. <laughs> while y'all were on the grind. Yo, my, my Yo, Leo Cruz. Casey Mac 38 on Twitter. I just <laughs> want to tell you, good brother, that this may be a. The biggest birthday shout out we got, so I don't know if you're gonna find anybody else, but I'm pretty sure you will. You will. We still left <laughs> some people are out. Brought to you. Yeah, pretty much. You know how Casey Mack is. He'll find you a birthday. He'd be like, "Yo, it's Noah's birthday." You know yeah. what I'm saying? Anyway, he'd he be um, adding dudes that shouldn't even be on there though, like Orlando. Yeah, he'd be picking Kendrick. out cats from the Bible and then. Like, <laughs> Anyway, uh, Orlando <laughs> Kendrick's <laughs> birthday. Like, no. never, never, never his birthday. <laughs> he picked out, out the worst player. Like, oh, it's Steve Jelts' birthday today. Anyway, um, for those who grew up struggling with Phillies baseball, you know who Steve Jelts is. Uh, <clears throat> birthdays are brought to you by Digital Extreme Technologies. Do you or your business need a custom website? Well, for dynamic, professional, and most of all, affordable custom website solutions, you need Digital Extreme Technologies. No need to break the bank for an effective online presence. Financing options are available. Visit DigitalExtremeTech.com or call 267-205-4203. And for a discounted rate, tell them more of them sports sent you. Jump into these birthdays. No, yeah. The first birthday is the God. Tim Tebow turns 27. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even hit the button. He said Yo, the God. The next birthday is one Julius Jones who turns 33. My birthday. Yay! <laughs> Go away. Roy Williams, not the receiver, but the safety Roy Williams, turns 34. Biscuit. Also, we have Juan Pierre. Juan Pierre, who may have the softest name in sports, turns 37. You I used to run base like Juan, Juan Pierre. Pierre. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, his name Juan Pierre. <laughs> Middle anyway. name probably like Jacques. Juan Jacques Pierre. <laughs> Juan Jacques Pierre. If it ain't, that's what we just gave him anyway. <laughs> Yo, Mike Vrabel, who has the dumbest spelling last name. Mike Vrabel turns 39. Like, R's are not supposed to go after V's. I'm sorry. He's one of them um, Patriot zombies after he left the franchise. They could do no pretty wrong. Pretty much. One of B. Austin's <laughs> favorite players, i say that uh, jokingly, is Chucky Atkins. Turns 40. Yo, Chucky got game in the Pro-Am. In the Pro-Am, he's nice. <laughs> In the NBA, the not so much, players but of in the life. Pro-Am, in the Michigan Pro-Am, that's that nice. That give him, keep him a check, bro. Keep him a nice little check. <laughs> yo, yo, stop disrespecting my man Chuck. Chuck got fucked. Chuck is nice <laughs> in the Pro-Am, yeah. Wayne Corbett, a.k.a. Wayne Sherbert, who's Wayne a um, Sherbert. smart, heady, heady player. <laughs> he's 41. a heady receiver. <laughs> <laughs> he's Y'all a smart, heady receiver. Hey, Mike Mamula turns 41. Mike Mamula. Mike Mamula, for those who don't know, jumped way up in the draft and was taken, I believe, by Ray Rhodes because of what he did at the Combine. He's one of those guys who was a Combine the, the, gangster. Not the Underwear so Olympics. Elite. Worked out he warriors. killed the Underwear Olympics. <laughs> My man was a, <laughs> had an amazing Combine game. He jumped like eight rounds. Anyway, Mike Mamula <laughs> turns 41. Shout out to Biggest Ray Rhodes. Biggest bust in Eagles history. Ed O'Bannon, one of the O'Bannon <laughs> brothers, turns 42. Not out to him, because we're going to talk about him later because of that antitrust lawsuit. They they came down with a verdict on that. Absolutely. The greatest basketball player of my life, uh, Irvin Magic Johnson, turns 55. Shout out to uh Shout out to Magic. EJ. Shout out to no, Cookie. No, not, no, not so much. Yeah, shout out to Cookie. <laughs> you talk about a ride or die chick. My man brought that home, and she still stayed. <laughs> Y'all chicks need to learn from Cookie, yo. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Paul said this man's name, but beautiful Bobby Eaton turns fifty six. Half of y'all Shout can bring Bobby. home half of y'all can bring home an incomplete check and chick a leave. 
<laughs> Yo, a chick will roll on you. <laughs> like, why you ain't get your, you ain't work your forty hours? What you doing? Yo, he brought her. A, he bought her a house in Virginia, and she stayed. My mom, uh, my mom boy brought an apartment in D.C. to the crib, and she was like, "No, I'm staying." <laughs> anyway, Rusty Wallace turns fifty-eight. At some point, when you grow up, right? Don't get to an age where you like you can't call me Rusty no more. Like, yeah. Anyway, Rusty yeah, Wallace man. turns fifty-eight. Yo, <laughs> yo, these brothers are disrespecting you, Rusty. I know about your, your car game, brother, and your drive game. You was one of the best. Shout out Rusty. Yo, his name yo, is Russell William Wallace. Rusty, though. I'm going to call him Russell. Oh, he got to go by William Russell. Wallace then. Yeah, Russell William Freedom! Wallace. <laughs> he a brave Yeah. Huh? The great Bob Backlund turned 65. What y'all know about Bob Backlund? Yeah. Oh, Rest Backlund. in peace, shout out. Eddie Gilbert. Eddie Hot Gilbert. Stuff, Eddie uh, Gilbert. This is a wrestling job right. today, huh? How about that? Hot stuff, Eddie Gilbert. Rest in peace. And also, Wellington Mara. Rest Former in peace. Shout out to owner. you as well, good brother. Yo. Those are the long list of birthdays until Casey <laughs> Mack gives us somebody we miss. Yo, I got one. Uh, I, I Clay, Clay Buckholz. Clay Buckholz's birthday. I got to do a Casey him. Mack and uh, a very important birthday that we cannot miss. Um, Shout out to you, Sir Mix a Lot. He turned 51 two days ago. She put him on the glass. And of course, Baby got that. Hold on, oh. we missed one. Uh, Casey Mack gave us one that we got to mention, yo. Selma from Good Times at 60. Oh, oh my yo. God, I love her. And she's still getting it done, too. At and 60, yo, did you, have you done. seen her? She still looks look all right at 60, though. Like, yeah. Like, man, but if, if you are a young man who grew up at the time we did, then you pretty much lost some hand babies to Thelma. So shout out to Thelma on her 60th. <laughs> <laughs> so shout out to her on her 60th, man. We definitely got to give her a shout out. We missed oh, that. So Thelma from Good Times. I got Everybody. lightheaded, you, man. <laughs> Yo, see, I almost shout blacked out. Shout out to Thelma from Good Times. That was an enormous amount of birthdays, but, you know, we got to give everybody love on their birthday. We'd like to give a nice, big, warm salute to all these gentlemen and, and ladies, Thelma. Yeah, at me, Thelma. Yo, um, Dad, tell everybody how to get in touch with us. It's my birthday. Right. Yay! I got to get myself together, though, man. I almost blacked out. I almost hit my head on this microphone, Note 249. <laughs> um, y'all can check out our website at warroomsports.com. While you're there, be sure to sign up for the War Report. That's our weekly newsletter. Click on the contact us uh, tab to send a message about our company, our show, or to inquire about sponsorship and advertising opportunities or any other business you might want to do. Uh, for general inquiries, email us at info at warroomsports.com. While you're browsing the site, make sure you click on the memorabilia tab. Buy some War Room Sports merchandise. Support the bros. Uh, click the blog tab to read our latest sports articles in the All's Fair and Sports and More blog. Then you can click the respective icons and tabs to like our Facebook page where we talk sports every day, to follow us on Twitter where we do the same. You can subscribe to our iTunes podcast so you can listen to our show and all our other shows on the, on the network. You can watch our videos at warroomsportstv.com. You can listen to the network directly at wrspn.com. And you can download our free War Room Sports mobile app. That's the most important thing of all. Download the free War Room Sports mobile app in your uh, your Android market, do they even call it that anymore? Your Google Play Store or your uh, your Apple iTunes Store. Uh, make sure you get that because you can do everything I just named right there from your phone, from the palm of your hair, uh, your hand. So uh, <laughs> make sure you guys do all of that. But um, <laughs> join us right now in the JW Philly Realty chat room so you can talk with us during the show. That's blogtalkradio.com dot com slash the war room. To enter the chat room, just sign up for a free profile on Blog Talk Radio. If you don't want to do that, you can sign up through your Facebook or Twitter accounts. And while you're at it, click follow so you can get updates and reminders about the show every week. As usual, we'll be taking questions and reading posts from Facebook, Twitter, and the chat room during the show. If you want to call in and speak to us, dial the Digital Extreme Tech Hotline. That number is 323-410-0012. Just press 1 when prompted. If you're already listening from your phone, just press 1 if you want to talk. Now, I know uh, we have uh, Fred Perdue of Heavy in the Games coming on with us in a matter of seconds. Um, I see some other people holding on the line. Uh, We'll get to you right after we uh, talk to Fred Perdue about his uh, Big Ten and Big 12 preview and predictions. Last week he did the ACC and the SEC. Uh, We're moving on as we get closer to the college football season. So, 
Uh, if you're holding the line, you can either hold or you can just call back right after Fred Purdue finishes what he's doing. Fred, are you yep. there? What's going What's on? What's going bro? on, fellas? How y'all doing? Pretty good. Fred. Man. Pretty good. It's really good. Yo, these football seasons are coming, man. College and and pro, it's, it's getting closer. I'm very I feel the excited. excitement. I'm <laughs> very excited, and I'm just it's it's this time of year. You just say, man, I'm, can we just skip the summer? Can we just can we, can we skip the summer just a little bit? See, I, I'm I'm good because I'm a TV dude, so I, I got a lot of stuff to, I was to, about to keep say, me busy. Going too far. You trying to like fast forward my life yeah. down there? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you can't you can't fast. I'm a TV dude, man, and you know, since the invention of of DVR and on demand and Netflix and all that stuff, I've watched more TV in my porn life sex. in the last six <clears throat> months than I have ever. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> in Pornhub, yeah. But um, what you got for us, man? I know you're gonna do uh, you're going Big Ten and Big Twelve. Uh, which one are you gonna do first? Well, uh, the Big Twelve is a, a conference that at <clears throat> one point in the last five to ten so years has been very, very good. They were the they were second in line behind the SEC, but recent times they've fallen off. They're they're really a one maybe a two team conference with the addition of of Baylor coming around after uh, RG three uh, came in with Art Piles and just set a set a light under that team. And it, it, it just I like what I see out there at Baylor, but I just don't think they're going to be great enough defensively to stand up to teams like Oklahoma. Uh, Texas has gotten better with Charlie Strong there. Uh, they're going to be a much more disciplined team. I think David Ash will actually even be uh, a lot better. If he can stay away from the concussion, uh, I think that team can be a, be much improved. Uh, Texas Tech has um, Cliff Queensberry, the, the, the former offensive coordinator from Texas Tech, as they're going into his second year. Um, the former offensive coordinator from Texas A&M, I'm sorry. Um, he was Johnny Manziel's original offensive coordinator. Uh, he actually played at Texas Tech. He's going to be inter- integral in that offense. They're going to be throwing the ball all over. This conference is known for offense. If you love offense, watch Big 12 games. You will see scores like 35-32, 45-42, and you may even see some games in the 60s. It, they play no defense, no defense. Um, I really see Oklahoma winning this conference. Uh, they have the pieces up front uh, on the offensive line. They have the defensive line as well. Uh, they have a quarterback established now in Trevor Knight, who is a is – I won't call him Johnny Manziel light. That's a little too much. But he, he <laughs> plays a very similar game uh, like Johnny Manziel. He's very athletic. He's not the tallest guy, but he's pretty accurate. Uh, with Oklahoma's light schedule, uh, that team can really make some noise. I don't think they'll have a team in the uh, in the initial playoffs, but Oklahoma will win this conference. Um, the only game that really scares me is the uh, Oklahoma Texas Red River Red River rivalry. Say that ten times. Um, that game is always unpredictable. Texas actually blew Oklahoma out of the water last year, and it was not expected. Uh, behind the Arnold Case McCoy and David Ash. That was a game I did not expect to happen. Uh, I actually had a, a little something on the side on that game, and it, it broke my heart because Oklahoma <laughs> was supposed to, to just – because Texas's defense uh, was just not the best, but they did have a running game, and that is the thing. Texas's running game has been solid. Uh, actually, Texas find, out, has, find out you're getting your Pete Rose on. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but Texas is gonna Texas is gonna be much better this year. Baylor's gonna be throwing the ball around a lot. Uh, watch out for Kansas State. Uh, Kansas State gets in. They don't. They're not huge in the recruiting uh, nationally, but they get a lot of junior college guys in. And every three to four years or so, they tend to surprise teams. And you, they're that team you don't want to take lightly. So Kansas State is another team to take uh, to just kind of look at every about midway through the season and see where they're going. Okay. All right. So uh, what do you see from the uh, the other conference? The Big Ten is a two-horse race in one conference. I, I really – they've changed the division. Uh, they're no longer the leaders in the Legends divisions. You have the East and West divisions, which makes 
so much more sense. Uh, you have a loaded East division where you it's just not really balanced. You have Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State, and Michigan State all in the same all in the same division. division. You also have you also have the you have uh, the University of Maryland coming into the Big Ten from the ACC after settling um, in court with them for thirty one million. Uh, to change conferences after breaking their their quote unquote lease in the conference, and you also have the addition of Rutgers, which makes absolutely no sense outside of getting into the New York market because Rutgers is bad. Um, but ultimately, hey, friend, let me ask you a question. Um, in our in our chat room, they were talking about the Big Ten. Uh, shout out to Tishino Tape again. They said it's um they call it the possession conference. There's no speed in the conference. Would you agree with that? For the most part, yes. This, the, the Big Ten is the slow conference. Every time they've gotten to a national championship, uh, for the most part, um, they've just been run through by SEC teams. They have the they have they run into them monkeys. They run into them monkeys from the SEC and get their <laughs> doors blown off. I was about to say to that question, of course, Fred think they're slow. He's from Florida. <laughs> well, in the he's from is, Florida. They, he sees lightning every day. Each in the elementary school uh, food. <laughs> <laughs> when you see guys living in Florida, when you see guys coming out of, going into other conferences, uh, you see guys like Tim Tebow, and he was a good college quarterback. He wasn't the slowest guy in the world. You see guys coming out of Florida like Tavon Off. Oh, I'm sorry, um, Stedman Stad- Bailey. I'm sorry, Stedman Bailey. Uh, when you see guys like Stedman Bailey going to West Virginia. Um, you see guys. Um, you see guys like Geno Smith at West Virginia. <laughs> um, you see guys just going to, to the Florida schools. You see so much speed. Devin Hester uh, from the U from years ago. Compare now, that. Where do track meets like in Florida? Like I, you know, do you guys have like huge track programs? Some some high schools in the high school ranks. Yes, some of the high schools do have pretty good track programs. At the college level, the University of Florida uh, is one of the top programs in the country, women's and men's track. Uh, Florida State has oh, thank, the best. Mer- thank mercy for the case that they have on their women's track team. <laughs> Yo, it must be something in the water. It's something in the water down there, Fred. Like you just, everybody just can't be born an athlete like that. <laughs> Florida State <laughs> actually had. Florida State has actually had a couple, uh, a couple Olympic sprinters. Florida actually had a couple. Um, University of Miami, even though they don't have a lot of Olympic guys, they still have a lot of their football players run track in the off season to keep up the speed. Uh, I mentioned Devin Hester, Travis Benjamin that plays for the Browns. Uh, mentioned a couple. Just, that's just a couple guys. Um, the the speed down here is just just crazy because it is you can practice year round versus up north in the Big Ten. Uh, you that's true. Can't, you can't really practice year round, even and you can't simulate. The outside conditions in a in a in an indoor facility, uh, even yeah. when it's cold here, they you grown, still they grown. What what? Let's to our listeners. What Fred is essentially saying is they grown men by the time they're fourteen. I, I'll I give you an example. That. I'll give you a good, a very good example. And I've seen these two teams up close and personal. Uh, there's a high school in Plantation, Florida, called American Heritage. Uh, we'll Plantation, actually, Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to PlayStation Root. High School. Oh, I'm sorry, American Heritage High School. They have um, nine of their players are going to be Division One players. They have the number one Root. dual threat. Uh, their their head coach is actually a former University of Miami uh, Hurricane first round pick and Mike Rump, former 49er. Uh, he, I, I've seen this team up for, up close and personal, um, and this team is very good, very fast, and they actually just had the number one running back in the state go to Georgia. Uh, he ran a four five, and that was average for him. Uh, their Damn. defensive their defensive backfield is loaded, and their offensive line they have a freshman uh, that was about three hundred and fifteen pounds at about six five. It truly is Yo. the plantation. Like, it's a stop bragging. Down there. Stop yeah. bragging. Who's going to win the Big Ten? <laughs> stop bragging. Before I, before I give you that shout out, I, I, I don't ever do this. Shout out to Lakeland High School, too. Um, they produced the, the Pouncy Twins. You can thank the, the NFL, can thank us for that, too. 
Um, <laughs> but the Big Ten, uh, my prediction for the Big Ten, I have Ohio State going back and uh, going to the going to the uh, big uh, the Big Ten title game from the East. Um, the thing is with Ohio State. You haven't lost your quarterback. You lost a couple pieces on on offense, but the defense has gotten better. You have guys like Noah Spence coming back on the defensive line. Uh, Braxton Miller is going to be much better uh, as, as far as a passer, from what I've I've been reading and hearing from through the throughout throughout the uh, off season. Uh, he's improved as a passer, and that's very hard to say from an Urban Meyer quarterback because none of them can throw the football, a la Chris Leak, a la. Uh, Tim Tebow. None of them have learned how to throw the football, but apparently Braxton Miller has. Uh, they will end up winning. Uh, the, the, I think the last game of the season will be the determining factor. Michigan will uh, ultimately be try to play spoiler, but Ohio State uh, will win that game. And out of the West, I see uh, Wisconsin coming out of the West uh, to win that, to eventually play Ohio State. Ohio State goes on to win the Big Ten, uh, and again, a very close game, actually. Um, Wisconsin has a very good running game. The determining factor for that team is going to be uh, their quarterback, Joel Stave. If he can win the – right now he hasn't even won the position yet. But if he can win the position and, and just play an extra offensive line, uh, he can actually just play a, a pseudo-offensive lineman, hand the football off to guys like Chris Clement and um, – uh, that team is going to be very good. I, I really think that team is going to be really, really good. And Melvin Gordon as well, who's going to be a Heisman candidate coming out of the Big Ten. Okay, cool. So what um what conferences are you going to give us next week? Uh, we're going to round it out with uh, the the Pac-12 and uh, my overall predictions for the college football playoff will be up for uh, debate next week. Cool. So uh, college football fans, look forward to that. <laughs> He's not gonna do the Miac. <laughs> He's fronting on the Miac in this track, man. Come on. All right, so look, let, let, let everybody know uh, how they can get in touch with you on the internet, man. Uh, you guys can let, visit let them know your Al Gore addresses. <laughs> you guys can you guys can visit heavyinthegames dot com uh, for all the latest, as well as you can follow me on Twitter at f produce sports. All right, we talk to you next week about the Pac-12, the MIAC, and the SWAC. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us. All right, we're laughing at the MIAC and the SWAC, man. We got, we got My prediction is right, the bands are going to be great. <laughs> the bands, halftimes, and homecoming. All right, man. All right, guys, have a good one. Yeah. Better yams in the MIAC. <laughs> Fred Purdue, everybody, heavyinthegames.com. Uh, If you're a college football fan, you know, tune in with us around this time every week, and he's going to give you the scoop of the week for college football. But he he, he needs to start fronting on the MEAC, though. But we're going to get into some hot topics. Jimmy, hot topics are brought to the good people by. If your schedule is too hectic to read as much as you want, try audio books and kick back and let someone else do the reading for you. All you have to do is visit Audible and sign up at audibletrial.com slash warroomsports. Uh, right now, I just finished the Divergent book because I want to watch the movie, but I wanted to uh, read the book first. Yo, shout out to my uh, homie Phil Maddox from Tissue and the Tape. He's a huge Audible head, too. Like, Audible is where it's at. Um, for those who watch TV and watch the best show on TV, which I consider to be Game of Thrones, um, all the books are on Audible. You can get a free one, audibletrial.com slash sports and get you a free book. Shout out to Audible for help making this possible. Them. You can get the first Game of Thrones free, and that'll hook you and make you buy the other ones. Or less. <laughs> no yo, doubt. TV shows that work, yo. But anyway, let's talk All about right. some hot topics. Brother. What's going on? Well, we know it's, it's that time of the year for the Little League World Series, and we don't really talk about that much. Um, I think like two years ago, remember we, we did have a long conversation about the World Series, but I think that was because of economic issues and, you know, that kind of stuff. But we just want to give a shout-out to two teams in particular. You got the, the all-black team from Chicago, um, and you got a team from our hometown, Philly, uh, with a female pitcher. Now, she's not the first female to play in the Little League World Series, but, you know, she's out there getting her Nolan Ryan on, and, it, and it's a beautiful thing to watch if you take the time to watch it. Uh, you guys got any thoughts on 
the Little League World Series. Tell me which one of these teams, you know, since we have we have some social ties to both of them. We're black, so you got the all black team from Chicago. We're from Philly. You got the team from our hometown, and just for the fact that you have two inner city teams in this, I don't think you get that a lot. Like, which one of these teams are you guys rooting for? Well, man, I'm rooting root- for the Chicago team because that's like right now, that's like coming out to uh, that's like coming out of Palestine under Hamas rule uh, to be able to play. <laughs> there you go. To, uh, yeah. To <laughs> so you know, three hundred. 300 is in full effect. There's a lot of Chiefs East and little dirks floating around there, and those wild, uh, wild savages don't speak English, wear tight, and pack big guns. So I'm glad I, I'm to root, see those brothers going I root for both teams. If they had to play each other, of course I'm going to go with the home squad. They're predominantly um, minorities as well. Um, and, of course, you got to root for the Chicago team, everything that's going on in Chicago. Although I think a lot of that is overblown and hyped by the media, um, but we can get into that another day. But they, I think I just read they won today. They actually won twelve to two. They spanked the team and um, they had to stop the game. They beat Washington twelve to two. So they See, already now, got the first. Up. Now you know we've had this issue, you know, the past few years where we're wondering why, you know, black kids have kind of strayed away from baseball and how it's possible to get black kids back into baseball. But this just shows you right here that, you know, you get an all-black team into the Little League World Series, and, you know, it's it's only been one game. I'm not going to say they're doing this much damage or that much damage or, they're you know, they've gone on to win the championship. But even jumping in there and getting a 12-2 to 2 mercy rule spanking on the, on the first uh, – on their first game of the tournament, that shows you that, you know, if black kids wanted to play this game – they could still be dominant at this game. So, you know, I, I'm pushing my son, you know, towards that. I mean, he could do whatever he wants in life, but, you know, I'm going to make sure that baseball is on the ledger during his childhood because, you know, the fact, first, it's a beautiful game, but secondly, you know, they're yeah. giving out $300 million contracts. So <laughs> by the time he get up there, yeah. it might be $400 million contract. But, no, look, we could dominate this Why game. Why you got to be racial? We to play. Look, I'm just I'm why trying you, to get the young. Guys I'm trying racial. to get the young. I'm not even gonna say minorities because there's a lot of minorities in baseball, but there are not Yo, a lot man. of black people left in baseball. And these little kids are out here showing you that you know if they we put our mind to this game, then you know. Listen, man. Could dominate um, shot this. To Phil, shot to Phil, who's on hold. We're gonna bring you on in one second. Let me say this though, yo. Melanin gives you power, yo. So anything we focus on, we will dominate, regardless of whatever it is. And that that's why, you know, we're considered scary because that's known. It's a known fact. We dominate anything. Like, yo, we'll take your women. We'll dominate oh, your man. sports. We'll take all the power. <laughs> so, so we just lost all of our white listeners. <laughs> shout, yo, shout out to my white brothers and sisters. I love you all. I love you all. But all I'm saying is it's the reason why, like, their their political and, and, and social games Black play with ball. us to keep us out of certain things because anything we get into, we dominate. And let's Martin face it, right. we may love all your women. We can, you know, change change uh, the race of the babies and change the entire complexion of the world. <laughs> Nobody else can do that. That's the power the more dominant, man. So, has power. so, therefore, we want to dominate baseball. We can dominate baseball. We can dominate anything we want to. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Y'all dudes are crazy, man. Yo. These boys ain't going to so make the world of more athletic. <laughs> listeners, these are the views of one Jimmy Williams. <laughs> And not necessarily the views of War Room Sports. These, these are my views. You can add me at JW the Blueprint. I oh, said it. God. I can take over the world. Like, yo, we want to end your race. We can just by squirting in your women, and it's over with. Oh. Anyway, with that, with that being said, I don't know what I'm saying. So it's by so, major but league, the point major league being, baseball. The point is this, so, Dad, getting back to your yo. original point. Is that we can dominate anything that we put our minds to. It's a matter of focusing and doing that. Even coming from. Situations as dire as Chicago, when you see uh, you know what's put out there, the perception of kids from Chicago. There's a lot of good kids on this team, kids who focus, kids with good grades outside of being great athletes, and they play well. They may not win the whole thing, but the fact of the matter is these inner city programs have just started. Like, well, well, actually, the one from Chicago has been around for a while, but they just got a lot of people back involved and a lot of parents involved. The one in Philadelphia um, just started, so. They're already in the Little League World Series, so only time will tell how it can actually, you know, progress and become one of the more dominant 
teams. It needs people to help it as well, though. Like, you need to help and donate because the thing about baseball, it's not cheap. I think Casey Mack mentioned in our chat room, baseball is becoming expensive in terms of a sport to have your kid play. But at the end of the day, you know, you want to see kids off the street. So everybody can pitch in and help all these teams. So my message in terms of the Little League World Series is see how you can get involved because it's a good thing to watch kids out there competing and learning about wins and losses. It's not like these soft sports you see where everybody gets a, you know, tie and gets a trophy. Although you're losing a Little League World Series. And you can get stomped and they'll stop the game, which is embarrassing. (laughs) <laughs> which they did today. But listen, exactly. Um, just a little tidbit, like, you know, because it's like uh, 67 years after Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier um, in Major League Baseball, opening day this year. Well, we broke the eight, color barrier, but go ahead, I'm sorry. Only 8.3% of the players in Major League, on, on rosters for opening day, uh, were black. So it's like the high was was like 18.7% back in 1981. So it's definitely been a decline. It's like they, you know, they they did all of that back in 1942 and then that opened up the floodgates for Negro League players to to transition into MLB, but now, you know, the bell curve is way back down and it's starting to look more like 1943, 1944 now than 2014. So, you know, we got to get these kids interested in a sport besides basketball and football. Baseball paying the most money, y'all. Uh-huh. <laughs> right. We got a call in line. Let's bring the uh, homie Phil on. Phil of Tissue and the Tape fame. Phil, what's good? You in the war room. What's up, good brother? Automatic. What's up, fellas? What's up? How y'all doing? Man, you already good. know. How you you <laughs> can y'all hear me? Yeah, yeah we can hear you. What's really good? Oh, ain't nothing, man. Yo, y'all had me dying, man. <laughs> Yo, you do uh, crazy, man. I got, they crazy. Yo, <laughs> I, I got, I got to say, I lived in Florida for for a couple years. So everything my man said is is one hundred. It Florida, <laughs> it, foot, foot, football is is right after eating and breathing, and then it's football. <laughs> Breathe, eat football. <laughs> yeah, yeah you know, he's not even Florida in that order. Texas, man. Florida and Texas. No, it, it, Texas not uh, Texas is huge, which is why they 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 in there. But pound for pound, they not seeing them. You know? <laughs> they, Florida Florida is so real, and it I, I found out like just I was I thought it was a joke and it was funny until ESPN did a special on it. There's a there's a there's an area in Florida where a lot of stars come from. They chase rabbits, wild rabbits. Yo, <laughs> yo, I saw you put the link in the chat room, yeah. though. I'm yeah. going to share it on our this is big. I don't want to get what too up, far big? into my personal, my personal experiences, but I've spent a lot of time in Florida. Some of you know why. And um, <laughs> it, it's, it's real. Like, it's, it's a special part of Africa that uh, they move those diasporas from. And, yo, from the time they hit, like, yo, from the time they hit puberty, they're like, they're like, Grown men, I can remember playing basketball down there, and they don't really take that sport as seriously. But they just, they just so athletic, it doesn't matter. Like, no skill. Yeah, they word. can jump over the backboard. They can <laughs> run faster than you. And they, they can, can look rabbit. down when they dribble, but they're moving too fast. Like, yo, it's just nuts. They're just <laughs> nutty athletes down there. It's, yeah, it's a, nuts, my- man. My my house when I was down there was near uh, Jensen Beach High School. Shout out to Jensen Beach, and they they weren't even like one of the top high schools in Florida. And those you see like fourteen year old freshmen running four five forties. I'm like, come on man, this this is and they and they barely making the team. <laughs> like, come on, stop it, man. These dudes like yeah, they might go to they might go to fam. Like they they not even getting scholarships from from the three major schools in Florida. They are sending them to Florida Atlantic or whatever. And these dudes is is like they would be like fast they faster than a lot of the dudes in the league. It's crazy, man. Yeah, but that's, I, how, that's, I, that's I, what I, like I, fam I, gets fam gets all like the rejects, and they're still good enough to sometimes you know there was a point where fam used to dominate the MEAC. Remember yeah, they had yeah, fam. They moved them to like a higher D1 level at one point. I think they might have come back down, but they get the, the Florida rejects, yeah, and they were still that much team better team. than everybody else. Huh? I think it's yeah. something in the water, Phil. It may be it may be rabbits, but I think that like 
It is genetic. Like, it's, it's biology. I feel like they put, you know, the same thing that Caesar got, the ALZ-112. I think it's like dumped oh, yeah. in the water Caesar out home. there or something. Yeah, I think they dumped it in the water out there. So everybody running around like Caesar with the Caesar powers, man, because it, it's ridiculous no. the, the level of athleticism these not come from. They can't shoot hoops, though, because I ain't seen, Anybody ever met from Florida ain't got no rock game. They can't shoot hoops to save their life. <laughs> You can throw them out of It don't even matter. You can throw them out of It don't even matter. They play basketball like animals. Like, oh, you just not that bad. Yo, just, you said just throw them out of you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, just throw them out. Just throw them out. Yo, just go for <laughs> the rim. Yo, y'all crazy, man. <laughs> right. Yeah, man, but it's, it's something to do that, man. Look, I'm going I'm to I'm definitely share that video you put out there, though. The Legend of the Rabbit yeah, video, because that's hilarious. Yeah, man, I just I just wanted to holler and, and hey, and don't please don't bring up Mike Ruff. Tell you tell your man don't bring up Mike Ruff in in San Francisco, man. That's a sore subject because he went to the I U. Wanted, I wanted to say dude, something man. so bad. Mike Ruff no. is historically one of the worst cornerbacks to ever exist. We don't acknowledge his existence. He never played for us, as far as the record says. Let me ask you a quick question. We know you're a huge Niners fan. Like, what are your thoughts about this season? What are, what are you projecting? As of right now, now we can check back with you later on when everything starts. But right now, what are you projecting for your squad? You gonna get over there? Twelve that, huh? and four. Twelve and four. Uh, it. I tell you, this is. It, it all comes down to one thing: healthy. They got to be healthy. Uh, mm-hmm. The running game is still going to be sick. Uh, I got to see how my boys get back. How how Navarro Bowman get back. Uh, that that's going to be the key. The uh, the secondary is still kind of a question mark because it's all new guys. You know what I mean, it's, it's only one returning starter from last year in the secondary. Uh, yeah. But I think uh, worst case scenario, we we ten and six in the absolute worst case. Best case, we thirteen and three. Uh, I still think they still they probably the have. Yeah, I still think that, that that y'all have the the best chance of beating the Seahawks. I re- remember last season, yeah. man, y'all were one. I'm not going to say poorly thrown, but if if Cap throws totally that thrown. ball a little better, Richard Sherman is not on TV talking trash because he was actually beat on the play. The ball was, so was. underthrown. So, you know, he took that as I'm the Yo, man. But I, I, he made the play on it. I, I, Gotta I give him his props. But if that's a better throw, then the Niners are going to the champ, going to the uh, Super Bowl. Bill, 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 my, my, can, my can, problem, can I just talk my problem my, with y'all? Go ahead. My, my problem with y'all is I really believe that you guys have the team – at every single position, with the exception of quarterback. I think you have a tremendous athlete at quarterback, but I question his decision-making and his IQ because I've seen him <laughs> make very, very dangerous mistakes. Uh, okay. Michael Vick-type mistakes. Uh, oh, no, I don't Norbit, do that. Norbit from D.C. type mistakes. Yeah, I think you threw him a little low under that bus. Mike Vick mistake. I don't know. Um, be awesome. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I don't. I don't think. I don't think it's. I don't think it's on uh, Ron Mexico levels. But well, look, man, he um, got that. He got that pay as you go contract, so he probably still hungry. <laughs> My man got a cricket contract. <laughs> <laughs> but go ahead, Phil, make your point. <laughs> he, he, he got the tri phone contract. But no, I, I just wanted to say, uh, like it. It really get down to, at the end of the day. They they have to smack them in the mouth. They they can't let Seattle be the bully that they've been. And we're in the yeah. toughest division in football, so it's it's everybody's tough now. So you you have to even if you got to get a penalty, you gotta you gotta smack them, man. Because well, like, that's Richard amazing Sherman, in itself. That that is amazing in itself because I say about five to seven years ago that was the worst division in football by division. far. Everything everything cyclical, man. That, that just, Absolutely, everything's cyclical. Yeah, man, but it, and because like that's what that's what Seattle did. They it wasn't that they were so much better, but they they smacked people in the mouth with reckless abandon, and we have to take that same mentality. Um, they were the most penalized team in the league, but they won the Super Bowl. When the Ravens were the most penalized team in the league, they won the Super Bowl. Um, you gotta be, they, gotta they be both, nasty. Man. They both walked on nasty. our ass to do it. I mean, so when the Raiders, you know, when the Raiders you know, are the most penalized team in the league, they don't win. They're the worst team in the league. That's because they're the Raiders. Raiders. The, challenge, the, challenge, the challenge is going to be the leader and the heart and soul of that team. 
He's just about that action, boss. He's just about that action. <laughs> Oh, he's talking he about, about Lynch. Lynch. Talking about Lynch. He's talking about, about, about Lynch. Oh, he's talking about Seattle. Yeah. Lynch. I know that, but I, 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 I yeah. thought he was talking about the heart and soul of the uh, he, Niners. He, I know you're he, talking about that action. No, he's not the leader. He's part of the I'm a killer gang. The, the best, the best, the best two people on that team are the safeties. That, that's the oh, only reason Richard, I, no, no, Richard no, no, Sherman that's got that. That's one. two people. Totally agree exactly. with that. That's two people don't talk about when they the heart when everybody slurps Sherman. The they don't talk about the safety. That team comes from that dude, man. He's just about that yeah, action, bro. I, I, I yeah, agree with you on off the field. He, his attitude is their heart and soul, but on the field, it, it, it's Cam. Cam and uh, Earl. Those dudes is the reason why Richard. Richard, in fact, he owed them. Oh, because he's the reason why okay, he got no, no, no. that you know, contract. I completely, I completely, hey, completely One last agree question. With that. Did, tell me, tell me you saw Marshawn Lynch at the ESPYs, yo. Oh, so. <laughs> yo, he had two dickies in a scully on. He had two two dickies in a scully on at the ESPYs, cuz. He, he from Oakland, man. man. That's how they roll. Bagging. Yo, he's bagging for both sides. My man, yo, my man moonlights as security at the swap meeting, Slauson, in Compton, yo. <laughs> Yo, I think Yo. he left the, the, the what's the name, early, too, and didn't tell anybody so they couldn't get a seat filler for him. He just left an empty Yeah, yo, because he left in the beginning. He was sitting there, and I'm dying laughing. Like, yo, this boy got a two piece stickies on with a skull cap in the building. He got the skull on. Like, but you supposed to let them know when you leave him at award shows because they got them seat fillers running around, you know, so it won't look bad on TV. Dude just he left just an empty seat. <laughs> yeah, man. Good job, man. Some, some, somebody got a front row seat at the ESPYs because uh, about that action, he bounced. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no doubt. Hey, Phil, man, thanks for your call, man. Everybody, don't forget, check out Phil on WRSPN.com. His podcast, the Tissue and Tape, is the premier hip-hop podcast on all the Internet. Um, great episode Absolutely. last one. I just listened to it. Yeah, you know I mean, let that man cook. But, Phil, we thanks for the call, good brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let that man cook, y'all. All right, y'all. All right, y'all, 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 y'all take it easy. You already know. All right, Phil. All right, Phil. Yo, let's bring let's bring another quick call on the line. Everybody's calling. Let's see what uh, Rob has to say. Rob calling from all the way out Cali. Rob, what's up, homie? What's up, man? It's really good. That action, Yo, ball. man. Hey, can you bring back that that track? I need love because <laughs> the Lakers should have had Kevin Love, man. I just I feel upset. <laughs> Yeah, you still upset about that? Come on, man. Like, yo, I told – listen, my fellow Lakers fans got mad at me, but I told y'all, yo, Dr. Buss is turning over in his grave because his son is running this organization into the ground. I told y'all, everybody kept saying, well, Kevin Love's a free agent. The Lakers will always be back. Yo, we ain't the Lakers no more, yo. We something else. <laughs> the Lakers. <Man. laughs> at, least, at least we ain't the Sixers, you know, so – Oh, hey, they're in better I, position than we you are. Say that now, I'm about to say, you're not paying attention to what they're doing. The Sixers are tanking on <laughs> purpose. And that they're in a better position talent. than we are, man. <laughs> uh, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Like, yo, you, the, you, got about, you got about one more year for the jokes. We let you get that off. You got about one more year. <laughs> if Dr. Buss was alive, <laughs> there's exactly. no way we go into this offseason where LeBron, uh, you talk about Bosh, D. Wade, Melo, are free agents, and we come back with Jeremy Lin. That just don't happen if Dr. Buss is alive, yo. I, 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 I would be, oh, I would be, I would be, back with I, I would be satisfied, satisfied with him. I'll be satisfied with Greg Monroe. Oh, he's nice. Yeah. He's nice. So, uh, we'll oh, oh, see by if the way, that can Dez, happen. Uh-huh. By the way, Dev, the, the, the worst Eagles pick was not Malu, Malua. The worst Eagles pick was Buss was... The worst Eagles bus was Freddie Mitchell, and, and Eagles fans. No, oh, man. we put That's we put Freddie Mitchell over Reggie Wayne. Nobody knows that. I mean, people I mean, do that with a lot of picks. Yeah, that happened. I don't think. Now, Mike Mamula didn't do that. What's the boy's name? The Eagles pick John Jones or somebody <laughs> Jones? What was the boy's name? John think about something. Freddie Mitchell, for you know, first of all, Freddie Mitchell and Donovan McNabb didn't get along. A lot of what he wasn't doing was because the quarterback wasn't messing with him like that. I mean, he became because a, he a, an all right possession receiver. Like on third down, you need a first down. You can go to Freddie. He even, I mean, in his little tenure in the league, he got a nickname, First Down Freddie. He probably gave it to himself. But at oh. the same time, you can't call him 
you can't call him a bigger bust than Mike Mamula because he was a part of one of the greatest plays in Eagles history. Like Mike Mamula didn't even like he he had no, no memories. Oh, yeah, hold on, hold on. Mike Mamula. Freddie was a part well, Mike of Mamula was drafted, right? Now this 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 is the thing. Mike Mamula was drafted. The Eagles traded to get the pick to take Mike Mamula, saying he would be the next Reggie White. And yeah, the pick they, they traded was Warren Sapp. Yeah, it was nobody Ooh. making a big. No, nobody made a big deal out of Freddie Mitchell being drafted. I think he's considered such a bust because you know he was a loudmouth dude. He was an early. He was a first round pick. He wasn't an early pick because the Eagles were good back then. Mike Mula, like he said, they they traded up. And <laughs> Reggie Wayne is Reggie Wayne, but oh. Warren Sapp is already in the Hall of Fame. Like and, and Rob, I don't know if you know this. You can do the Mike research Mula. because I've done it before. Mike Mamula was one of the first players who was smart enough. I give him credit for this. He trained specifically for the combine. Before he did that, players never really did it. They just showed up and did what they did. He hired a trainer to train him for the drills that would be at the combine. Yo, he went to the combine and just went and blew it out. That means his team team prior was smart. They probably probably started to notice a trend. As as my pop once said, because of my Eagles fandom, and I do this for a living, I actually went and analyzed some of Fred's statistics, and, and this is a real this is a real percentage. I know y'all get on me for me pulling these arbitrary percentages, but more than 75% <laughs> of his catches were for first down. You can go look that up. Wow. More than listen 75% this, Bob, of his this. catches. I just, just, to give, just to give you an idea of how much a bust Mike Mamula was, in the combine, he had, I'm reading it now, he had 28 reps to 225, which was more than Tony Baselli, who was considered a strong man. He scored 49 out of 50 in the Wonder League test, and his vertical jump was higher than all the cornerbacks at the uh, combine. He, he was like, smart guy. He trained specifically for the combine, and he couldn't even play football. <laughs> no, he <laughs> trained for the football. Wonder League. Uh, <laughs> hey, they probably, he probably studied uh, for him. Uh, probably got cheated. The yeah, white privilege. He probably got the answer. <laughs> Sorry. They got the hey, what, hey, hey, Dev. Hey, hey you? Dev. What you what you think about this season, man? Because everybody got mad when I talked about LaShawn McCoy, man. What do you think about this season? Yeah, I was trying. For, I, like I was, I was defending you on that to a Giants fan because it's like sometimes when you when you talk to sports fans, like especially people that are fans of rival teams, like nobody wants to have a logical conversation. They just want to take shots because they're rival fans. So, you know, somebody's taking a shot at you because they think, well, what success have they had without them? But success doesn't always mean that you won the championship. That's not the only level of success. Uh, I think, I mean, I, in this division, like, I don't like to pick the Eagles for anything, and we haven't done our picks yet, but I see them maybe probably most likely winning this division again. Not that that's a very hard thing to do right now because I think the NFC East is kind of down. Um, but it, it'll be interesting. To your question that you asked online, like how would, like if something happened to LaShawn McCoy, how would they do? I think I think the addition of uh, Sproles is big in the fact that if that happened, it wouldn't be catastrophic. Not that Sproles is an every down back, but he's one of those people when he's on the field, you have to know what he's doing and where he is. So I think you just – you know, I don't really like gimmicky football, but if LaShawn was to get hurt, you have to have Polk in there with a lot of change-up from Sproles, and you might have to get a little more gimmicky, you know, with moving Sproles all around the field. Now, I think they would be all right as an offense, but it may not be the type of offense that could sustain a bad defense. Like, remember last year, the Eagles still won 10 games with a bad defense. They improved later in the year. But the offense was scoring so many points that it gave the defense time to learn on the fly. I don't think if LaShawn McCoy okay. is not in the lineup, the offense might be, might not be as dynamic, and they won't be able to, you know, hold it down for a okay. defense that's not pulling their I weight. Th- I think they I think they have a legitimate shot to actually win the division. Like they really ain't hard to be in here, but still. <laughs> 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 Rob, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and say I'm gonna jump out the window and just say the Eagles are gonna win the division, barring a major injury. And, and B. Austin, from what never I've picked seen, for everybody out there who's probably screaming, "Y'all homers!" 
B. Austin never picks the Eagles to win the division. So I don't know that four thing, four man. Years. <laughs> that <laughs> might be the worst. I know that means they're not going to, but <laughs> yeah, we probably yeah we probably gonna lose we probably gonna lose every game based on this. But <laughs> I have seen enough of 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 dudes' offense. Um, I got CTE. Excuse me. What's Cut the name of our coach? Yeah, Cut Chip Kelly. Oh, Chip Kelly. Oh, yo. <laughs> Yo, I've seen enough of Chip Kelly's offense to, to to give him the benefit of saying in a weak division, I think that his system and what he brings to the table it is a has a solid foundation, and the personnel that he goes after fits his system. He's less about getting specific, you know, superstar players and more about drafting to fit his system and, and so I think that he's had one year under the belt and I think that now as we've seen his draft habits I'm, I'm not saying that he's uh, 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 the end all be all or he'll be a great, end up being a great coach but from what I've seen I kind of like it, I, I hate the gimmicks, I still don't want to see any of the Oregon gadget plays and that dumb stuff he does with Brad Smith and all of that but I've seen <laughs> Did you get of a good foundation <laughs> LaShawn Lash- 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 McCoy is a special player. He's the type of dude that no matter what system you put him in, I think that he would have a measure of success in it, and he can win you a game or two by himself being on point. Darren Sproles obviously is not that type of player, but I think he's a, he's a very, very good player at what he does, and he fits in that system, and Chip is going to know how to use it. So I think – regardless of who's out there, with the exception of Nick Foles and, and the offensive line, I think all of the other skill players are kind of interchangeable. I think, I think we're a 10 and 6. I think we're 9 and 7 to 10 and 16. Regardless, I think LaShawn McCoy gives us an edge in the playoffs and maybe puts us at that 11 and 5. That's, okay. that's what I think. Now, of course, the you just broke it all down. So I guess like we can save save your time next time when we do the picks because you just broke it all the way down. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah we, my, my uh, bad. My bad. Oh, thanks. We just gonna we just uh, gonna edit that up, Jimmy, and just push play when it's yeah, time. Yeah, save that when we make our picks for each division and whatnot. Indeed. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yo, <laughs> anyway, Steph Curry's better than LeBron though. Steph Curry's better. No, than we didn't get there yet. All right, Rob, Rob. <laughs> thanks for the call, uh, homie man, and thanks for the continuous support, man. We really appreciate it. All right, as my pop wants to say, all the best athletes are dark skinned. Give me that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bring it to the pop. Hey, Rod, take it easy, homie. <laughs> Yo, yeah, the war room awesome. blowing up. Before we even move the on, let's get the last The war room is the war room. The war room is the war room. The war room is the pan Africanism. <laughs> Yo, the pan African war room. Roll Tide, Tobias, you on the line? What's up, homie? The war room. Roll Tide, what's going on, people? What you up? already know. We chilling, what man. What's good? All right, first, I want to talk about my Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but we're probably mathematically eliminated from the playoffs already with those awful uniforms. Damn. I don't know why they hate <laughs> those uniforms, man. Good Lord, they're awful. Uh, but, you know, a couple of things I want to get off my chest real quick. Thanks first. Uh, I believe ESPN is dropping the football with the NBA, per se. When football season comes back, they will act like the NBA never existed. <laughs> and, uh, and because, let, let's be honest here, with a lot of the storylines and the star, it kind of is a 12-month-a-year sport now. And, uh, but they act like nothing else is this size. I don't know if that was big, it's huge, but they act like nothing else ever exists. Even college football, they act like it doesn't exist. Yo, LeBron, yeah. LeBron. Um, LeBron kind of changed that. Like, LeBron seems as though with his free agency and all this craziness that's going on with him, he's made it like a 12-month sport. Um, because think about how long we were talking about where is he going to go and then all the chips that fall after he decides where he's going to go. But you're absolutely right. When football starts, nothing else matters. Yeah. And uh, and that that what kills him. I'm like, there are all the good storylines here. And then when the NBA, let's say the NBA starts, no fanfare. College football starts up. Eh, okay, when the NFL starts. Now I know partly because ESPN is in the Northeast, and and they, and they talk about the New York Jets entirely too much for me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being honest with you. Good Lord. How many times can we watch first take and they talk about the Jets? They're going to stink. 
the Cowboys are going to stink. Why we keep? Why they keep talking about these teams that stink? <laughs> <laughs> hey Tobias, Tobias. Here's one thing I just want to say, and this is Jimmy, by the way. Um, football is America's game. It's bigger than just like like the whole Northeast bias thing. And the reason I know that is because even as us who run a, um run our own company, the War Room, when it comes to football season, that's when our sites, all of our sites, are more active because yeah. people love talking football. It's something. Cra- I mean, I, I I don't. I mean, it's partly it's the way the game is structured, right? So they play once yep. a week. And, and you have a story that week, and then the week between each game, you have other stories. It's, it's sort of like great storytelling. In the it's NBA, you don't have that. Rate, that yeah, so many it's, games. It's like, is a right. game tonight, and is a game tomorrow. You really can't discuss and overanalyze because it's another game. And the same thing can be said for baseball, game, but game, with football. Game, uh, game value. So it's, each game yeah, it's like, like each game becomes so valuable, but there's a week between where you can – Overanalyze and find out what wide receiver's wife is leaving him, and everything is just like. And, and and let's not get it twisted. Gambling also plays a part in the popularity of the sport as well as fantasy. It's just it's yeah, just, man. It's, it's, just a perfect, else, it's just a perfect storm. You know what else though? This is why I say I would touch on this also. I don't like the whole Tony. I flip subjects real quick. The whole Tony Stewart thing. The first I was talking to my dad, visiting my Uh-oh. dad the other day, and I I was telling my dad. You know that was an NBA player that got on the court ready to fight? They be calling the NBA a thug league, renegade league. But NASCAR mm-hmm. guys fight, hop on the track, wise fight people, cut each other out, do whatever. Ah, you're part of the game. Baseball players clear the benches. Every time someone gets a ball thrown at them, ah, it's part of the game, boys be boys. Football players Tobias. fight, boys be boys. Tobias, yeah. this, this, this is America, and that's spelled with three Ks, so that's just going to be there. When you see yeah. when you see um, mm-hmm, yeah. African American kids getting uh, some sort of altercation and the shots fired, it's like yo, um, it's black on black crime and this that and the third. White kid go shoot up a bunch of a movie theater with all his uh, white friends in there and they That's say so it's illness. about gun control. It's about gun control. It ain't about gun control when yeah. it comes to Chicago. But when I walk into a theater and I light the theater on fire, it's about gun control. So I mean, that's just that's just what it is, man. Um, yeah. You know, in terms of the Tony Stewart thing, we're going to get into that in a little bit. But in terms of, like, you know, the bias you see with the media, that's a reality. I mean, it's like that all the time. Yeah, yeah the, only way, the only place you're going to find a, a relatively unbiased approach to cover right here. the media is with war, is with war room sports and bias <laughs> because the faces yeah. of, the, of the gentlemen that play in the NBA and the NFL are similar to the faces of the gentlemen that scare America, that get killed by the police, that that do all of these things and, and fit the stereotype. So it, it comes back down to a conversation we were having earlier in the episode, and, and that's really the value of black male life. What's the value of a black man's life in the, in the grand scheme of things? How do we value it as black people or as black men? How do white people value it? How do Asian people value it? How does America in general value black men's life outside of the context of entertainment and athletics are we really valuable so yeah and i'll say this before i go i'll say i'll say these two quick things before i go everybody's mad about ray rice wait till they read the report on greg hardy see how many games he gets and also the fact that people say like why well, are the black guys playing sports and the nfl the faces of the league are still mostly white guys because the quarterback is the face of the team and a lot of people get behind that. In the NBA, you just see the tattoos and stuff like that. And, and it just, I mean, it's, and it's, 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 it's a perception. All of it plays a part in it, but we're getting ready to take the quarterback yeah. position too, so then what they're going to do. Yeah, they, they, they already hate that because – and you know something? I'll say this also. I'm not going to hang up. Every time a black quarterback comes up, they are, they are picking this guy, that guy apart piece by piece. But, yeah, you got guys like uh, Johnny Manziel, oh, he's the greatest thing. And the guy made his live on hero lucky throws. Let's just be honest here. Yeah, he um, him hero lucky throws. Yeah, it's because he's too biased, man. Bro. Oh, oh, no, I tell you this. Like, of course, I'm an Alabama fan. One, he got shut down by LSU twice. But if you watch those games, yes, he had the stats. But a lot of those, but he made a lot. Of, you know how the time you'll, you get, like, a, a running back, get 150 yards, but half of that's, like, a hundred, like an 80-yard carry for a yeah. touchdown? So if he throws an 80-yard touchdown pass, or he runs around, throw it up in the air, and a six-foot-five number six-seven pick in a draft catches it over a five-ten quarter, come on, 
But there's a lot but of you know, the, fire, the great, the great thing yet. about sports is, uh, you know, it's going to show. If he's indeed a fraud, he's going to have his chance to show whether he's a fraud or not. Yeah. I'm not ready to judge him because I did watch him play in college. He did make some of those crazy throws, but he also played the position as well as any right, college right. quarterback could play the position. You know what I mean? So I want to give him his props. I'm not going to, like, you know, slam to him. But what you're saying, if it's all true, it's going to show at this level. And that's the great thing about sports is, you know, it's not yeah. all about talking because you have your chance to show and prove, and he will have his chance to show and prove. So, We'll see, but I get your point about the bias. I mean, but it's been there forever in every sport. I mean, look at John Daly as a golfer. He was a wreck, and he was treated like a cult hero. I mean, that, that's just throughout life. I mean, with the mayor yeah, from Toronto, that was, that, was a, that was a damn wreck, and they treated him like he was a, a lovable guy. You know what I'm saying? But if let's not even get into all that. Bottom line, Tobias, is yeah. we'll see what happens when Manziel takes the field. He'll have his opportunity to show whether he's a fraud or not. All right, man, you guys take it easy, man. Roll Tide, because the Buccaneers are already eliminated from the playoffs. Well, at least my Dodgers doing okay. Hey, you know, I'm from Alabama. We don't have any protein, so I just latch on who I latched on to a team. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, Bro, hey, you know, man. Hey, y'all take it easy, guys. man. All right, homie. <laughs> he said I just latched on. Oh, man. Hey, right, I don't so, know. Uh, <laughs> all right, Jim, real quick, man, before we move on, because um, I know you, you're the biggest – MMA fan here, so John Jones, after all this build-up, now I'm not even, you know, into the UFC like you, but the build-up between him and, and, and Daniel Cormier, like, yo, I've been getting hyped. These dudes rumbling at press conferences and all that kind of stuff. Now John Jones has a leg injury and has to sit it out, and they're going to reschedule it for um, UFC 182. Uh, what were your thoughts it, when you heard that? It, I it, saw a couple of people I wanted to get your – Opinion on this too. I saw a couple people say that John Jones was scared. Now, one person I confronted on our page, but he said he he admitted he was just trolling. But I've seen it from other people. <laughs> I mean, that here's real the thing, quick, right? Too. Here's the thing, though. There was a lot of hype in, uh, with this fight, and I haven't been this excited to watch a UFC fight probably since like um, Rampage and Rashad, um, two other black dudes, you know. But at the end of the day, I was very excited to see this fight. But this is something that happens. This isn't out of the norm. There have been several main events that have been postponed. I mean, that's the nature of the sport. These guys practice by fighting MMA, so a lot of times they get injured in practice. So it's not like this hasn't happened before. It's happened pretty much at every weight class at this point. So it's not shocking, but I am disappointed because I don't see how you can have that build up again. That was, you know, right. fight, like you said, fighting at the press conference, him getting caught uh, on camera not knowing he was on camera, showing, right. you know, that he basically, it's a fraud, but it's like all this stuff. You can't create that again. Because so if you try to create it again, die it's down, authentic. basically. Like this, yeah, this was authentic. So you know, I mean, I'm very disappointed because I would have loved to seen this fight. I mean, John Jones is a dangerous fighter. I mean, I've never seen anything like him since I've been watching mixed martial arts. Mixed martial arts, and Cormier is like one of the greatest wrestlers. I mean, the guy is a beast at wrestling, and you know, he's the number one contender. And I've definitely what, what it makes, uh, Yo, when they pump it back up, Jim, so somebody's just gonna have to steal it. somebody at the press conference. They're gonna have to recreate this, man. <laughs> um, B. Austin, you said what, what makes him like such a tough competitor? In my opinion, I'll give my yeah. personal opinion. Yeah. My personal opinion is, um, he studies the uh, the arts of, of of fighting just like everybody else. But I think that he's one of the best athletes. Like, you know, it, it's sort of like having someone who has a solid foundation, oh, wow. but they're also the best athlete. And I think that's what separates him is his athleticism. I mean, dude's like a. I mean, he has two brothers who play professional football. Like, so it's in their genes. Sorry. These guys are are great athletes. So he brings an athleticism to the sport that you know you really haven't seen. He has all the other like you know skill sets that everybody else has, but his athleticism is out of control. And you know so that's what makes him. He studies like a, he studies like a Kyle Sefcheck, but he's got the athleticism <laughs> of like a Muhammad Ali. Listen, man, yo, you trolling right now? All I'm saying is, the dude is a uh, the dude is a hell of an athlete as well as a martial artist. So you know, and and also his size, pause. But he's he, the way he's built his size, and you combine that with his athleticism and with his mar- martial arts, and you have a guy who's dangerous. I mean, his only loss came as a disqualification, which was BS because dude was down, and they said he need him, so they disqualified him. But at the end of the day, oh, like you got Roy Jones on. More or less, yeah, yeah, more or less. But but he was he was beating the trash out of dude in that fight. Like I saw the fight. So 
But uh, Cormier is, is, is interesting because one thing about MMA um, and boxing as well, any sort of combat sport, yo, anybody could be anybody on every given. All it takes is one punch, and we've seen that. Like, you know, yeah. the greats in boxing of all, anybody can lose on any given day. So I was yeah. definitely looking for. I don't know how you begin, how you build this back up like this, Dad, to answer your original question. Because I agree. I've seen people who don't even watch MMA, that aren't even in MMA, was like, "Yo, I'm ordering this," and I'm like, "Damn!" But, you know, based upon all the all the hype and all all the you know, people love drama. So when you see people talking trash and fighting at press conferences, you have the average person who wants to tune in for that. So they had it. Mm. World star. <laughs> had the world star to it. All right, so y'all know the um. The uh, the judge ruled against the NCAA in that um, antitrust suit led by Ed O'Bannon. So what that essentially means, and we can just get our thoughts on this one real quick, um, it means that the NCAA regulations that prohibit players from getting any money other than scholarships and the cost of attendance to schools when it comes to selling their rights, you know, to their names, images, likenesses, you know, for video games and stuff like that, um, the NCAA they can't regulate against that anymore. Now the judge um, ruled in favor of this was the case led by Ed O'Bannon. That's why I shout out to him on his birthday. Um, they they basically claim that the schools were conspiring with the conferences to block the athletes from getting a share of revenues um, generated from the use of their images and all that kind of stuff. And remember, we used to have these kind of talks. This was the the one thing that I did agree with. Um, I always, you know, I, I wasn't too keen on the whole just pay the players to to play type thing because I just thought it was muddy and murky waters and it was such a difficult thing to try to institute. Like everybody wants them to get paid, but nobody really has a good program. But this, I was always on board. I think if you're if they're, you know, selling your image, your likeness, or you're on video games, you're on posters, pictures, or whatever. I definitely think you should get paid for that because that's outside of, you know, what you're doing in between the lines. Like they're they're definitely exploiting you in that in that type of situation. So what do you guys think? I mean, she kind of capped it, um, and this is not final, but she she was saying at least five thousand dollars a year, and these would be deferred payments. So it basically means if you stay for four years, when you leave, like they're gonna while you're there, they're gonna put your money in a trust. And once you leave, you're going to get at least $20,000. I think even if that's the case, for a lot of these big athletes at these big schools, their school and the NCAA will still be getting over on them because what they've done for that school as far as their likeness is concerned is probably generating way more than just $20,000. But it's something, and it's a start. So what do you guys think? Well, um, as documented in that amazing blog post I wrote in reference to the book, The Cart by Taylor Branch, which is on W, well, warrensports.com slash blog. You can read on some of my amazing writing. Um, something had to be done with this. This is just one aspect of how the uh, student athletes, as they call them, are taken advantage of. But I, I, more needs to be done. Like, like you said, there is really nobody with a concrete plan, but there's a lot of smart people out there to figure out amazing things. So how about figuring this out? Because... Something's going to have to be done, or, or you know, the game will continue to be. You say murky and murky and muddy is paying. It was already murky and muddy in terms of uh, people getting people are already getting paid. Let's keep it real. People are already getting paid. <laughs> oh yeah, people have been getting paid. Now. Yeah, they've been getting paid. You know, yeah, but that's like the thing. That's why. That, uh, <laughs> that's why <laughs> the argument is something. Go, this is the, why the argument you really don't hear it much from the big time athletes because they are getting taken care of. So they like. I don't want to really want to. Buck the system, and then I'm probably going to end up making less than what I'm making now, and then this third string dude is going to be making what I'm making. So let everybody just shut this up. Been going on. <laughs> this is let me get my forever. my handshake, like my said, money handshakes. Like when I was reading about Will, they said Will took a pay cut to go pro and leave the college. Like so, <laughs> shout out to Big Money Ed. Yo, shout out to Big Money Ed, Big Money Ed, and Chris Webber, you coward. But um, shout out to Big Money Ed and the, the, the handshake. <laughs> At the end of the day, Dev, like this is moving in the right direction. So I, I think with these uh, these lawsuits and the decisions made in the lawsuits is going to like you know push to have something done. This isn't the be all end all, but something will get done eventually. Maybe not in our lifetime, but because if not, you know the sport may not be around. I mean, 
you know, it, it's cra- some of the stuff is crazy. Some of the stuff that's documented that's already out there. If you read some of the stuff, you're like, yo, in terms of how serious <clears throat> some of the big time programs even take the ac- academia, and they want to fall on that. And t- we give them a free scholarship, but you don't make them do work anyway. <laughs> so they don't yeah. learn anything from the scholarship. It, well, it, I mean, it, a, a lot of that is if the student wants to apply themselves or not, they give you the choice, but they don't push anything on you. <laughs> right. It, it, it's one of those situations where it's a, it's a pacifier. It's a Band-Aid over a gunshot wound to me because if you look at, like you said, if you look at the impact, the economic impact of a, of your your top three players on your top, you know, 50 programs or whatever, to pay those guys a collective, uh, 80, call it $80,000, I think, it was, no, $60,000 at the conclusion of their careers against the possible $6 million, $10 million, $20 million in revenue that, that the universities made off of merchandising or off of ticket sales or what have you, it's it's kind of like they're just satiating those that are making noise by saying, look, see, you set up a little trust, you're paying them, now we're giving them what, what, what they want. So it's kind of like are these guys that are, are trying to make a radical step, are they going to accept what appears to be them being patronized, or are they going to say, no, that's not satisfactory. Here's the data on what we know you make and what the economic impact is at a college or university from a star player on, or even non-star players, you need to really pony up and pay. That that becomes the question. Are they going to, it's kind of like that lawsuit uh, that, that the pro players settled with, with uh, pertaining to the CTE, and everybody got like $100,000. Like, well, that, I mean, that's what happens when you're doing these large class action suits, though. That's, you know, they think the victory is just getting something changed. Like, everybody's not going to get rich off of this. And if you think about it, everybody's not even going to get paid off of this because everybody isn't good enough yep. to have their likeness used anywhere. Um, I wonder yep. if this is retroactive because, we, you know, one of the war room generals, Doc Bayon, he was on a video game back when he was playing Division One college basketball, so I wonder if they're going to go back and, and break, their, break everybody okay. off. I doubt it. Definitely was. <laughs> I doubt it. But... And at the same time, though, no, like with itself, oh. the the the, <laughs> the college, the NCAA, they're, they're we all know that they're not stupid. I think they've always kind of been careful in what they do. If you notice, a lot of colleges don't even put the names on the back of the jerseys, and even if they do, when they sell them, they don't because they're trying to look for that last loophole of not having to pay somebody. We're like, well, number four, we give that out every four, every two to four years. So, you know, it it doesn't – you can't prove, even though you're the one here scoring all the touchdowns, you can't prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that the jerseys we're selling are for you and not for the last two number fours that we have. So, you know, they they kind of watch themselves make those type of loops. If you look at this this from a different angle, like if I look at this strictly from a business angle, this was one of the greatest schemes ever put together. Like when you look at some of the things they did when creating the NCAA – it's so evil, but yet it's so genius. Like, and, and what you just said was one example of it. Even mm-hmm. down to them being called student athletes, that was put in place so they didn't have to pay workmen's comp insurance. Like, they, there's so many things they thought of um, because they knew that they had a cash cow. But the fact of the matter is, as time goes on and more information becomes available, and you know, living in this 24/7 news cycle, so many things come out. It's kind of like ruining what they've had. You know, it's sort of like. Um, when people start looking at slavery as being wrong, it's like, damn, we had a good thing for a long time. Um, no. They had a good thing for a long time. I mean, a lot, a lot of people got rich. God damn, a lot of people got rich. I mean, not all of oh. athletes, but a lot of people got rich based upon this scheme. You look at it from that angle, like, it was pure genius. Like, I'm going to take yeah. your name off the jersey. Everybody knows you're number eight <laughs> for Ohio State, but, you know, because you don't they, have and your they, name. And, on that, and because of that, Jim, like you said, I, I think it was a long-term plan that, you're not really retiring jersey numbers in college football. We're going to need those numbers. I mean, first of all, you really can't because of too many people coming through the system. You would run out of numbers. But it's still a good plan as far as the economics are concerned because 
when you put those when you put that stuff in the school store and when you put that stuff at Models and whatever around town, you do not have to put a name on the back Wait. of the jersey. I think at this point, I think they're at a point right now where they're like, yo, we're just going to see how long. It's sort of like when you're in a relationship with a chick and you know it's going to end, but you're like, yo, why is it still going on? I'm going to see how many times I can see before it ends anyway because I know it's going to end. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's, it's sort of the same type thing, man. Like, And that's what they're doing now, man. But shout out to the NCAA and shout out to O'Bannon for fighting this because it seems like he's been fighting for the last 30 years. <laughs> no, every, every one of Jimmy's show analogies got something to do with chicks. <laughs> no, yo, what's wrong with you? I got to chill, yo. No. I got to chill. I just realized that myself. Like, yo, I'm out of yo, pocket War right Room now. loves the lady. Yes, we do, yo. 95% of our fans wear high heels. Talking about <laughs> jersey <laughs> numbers. <laughs> Talk, hey, ladies. Talking about jersey numbers. Um, Paul George, even though he's not going to play next year, um, he had already, you know, a lot of people are thinking, like, well, doesn't he have better things to do than to be worrying about his jersey number? Actually, the deadline Every year to request a jersey change is in March. So if everybody's saying Paul George should be thinking about other stuff, kill yourself because he did this before he knew his leg was going to snap in half. Um, he's going to he's been approved to go to the jersey number thirteen next year, and this was all based. Uh, this was all prompted by something Bill Simmons said on TV. Um, he was talking about Paul George needing a nickname and all of this kind of stuff. So he was on TV. He said, by the way, I have some advice that will help Paul George become a, a household name. Actually, he wrote this. He said he should change his number immediately from 24 to number 13. Here's why. Can you think of anyone being helped by a nickname more than Paul George suddenly becoming PG-13? Uh-oh, PJ thir- PG-13 is heating up. Uh, warning, this game contains strong language, violence, and a possible heat check. We might have to make this performance rated R. It's too hot to handle. Let's make it happen already. So when Paul George went on Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Kimmel told him about it, and Paul George was interested, so he went and did it. Now, I've talked to – well, I've seen some of your you guys' opinions on the Internet. The, the nickname is kind of weak. PG-13, even though if you actually read the rating thing, which I've been doing lately because i got a three-year-old son and I don't know what I can take him to see and what I can – and what I can't. Nothing. So I've been reading it. PG-13 isn't as soft as it sounds, but we're just used to softer movies being PG, PG-13 or whatever. The nickname is it's kind of weak. It's not threatening. You know, it's, it's not really hot. It goes. Paul George 13, you know, people are making it easy these days. However, what we talk about on the show every week are brands. And no matter how many people think this nickname is weak, Paul George, by doing this, has just launched his brand, and I guarantee you there will be PG-13 logos. There will be, you know, it will be on his shoes. It will be everywhere. So whether you like it or not, Paul George just made himself a very rich man. What do you guys think? The brand is launched. Well, here's what I say. What I say is this. I give him props for one thing, and that is the nickname was given to him by someone else. A lot of these young dudes today can like, call me this. (laughs) <laughs> they give themselves a nickname, and to me, that's weak. Yeah, we've been all given our nicknames. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, shout to Dev the development. But uh, no doubt, you know, I got that about. <laughs> I'm running with it. <laughs> the development. With it. Hey, I got we that from autocorrect. Somebody gave me that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm running with it. the development. But anyway, <laughs> um, you know, Austin, one of those Austin is autocorrect. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so all I'm saying is this, man. Uh, you got to respect him for that. I agree with you that, you know, PG-13 is not like, you know, I'd rather be called like rated R. Or, I know. know. <laughs> rated XXX, cool G rap voice. And I'm going to talk like N- sex. NC-17. Anyway, um, NC-17. Yeah, something like that. But at the end of the day, it makes sense. Paul George, the number 13, PG-13, I can see it on sneaks. I can see the fans in Indiana going ballistic with it because they're already – you know, b-ball heads, and they're going to go crazy with the PG-13. So, mm-hmm. And he was a rising star. It's sad that what happened to him happened to him because, you know, I just wonder how he'll heal and how he'll be better ready to play. And I know what they say. You can come back in a year, but anytime I see a break like that, yo, I just worry. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, it's sad that it had to happen, I mean, but I like agree. I said, it, it just looks gruesome, but. You know, you can be back from that quicker than you could be back from an ACL, for real, for real. No, this is, no you're absolutely there. true, but, but it's just something about anytime anybody gets any kind of injury, I worry about how they come back. Because, you yeah. know, in sports, you see several times when someone gets an injury, 
And it's not that they can't play. It's, it's a mental thing where now yep. they're like, I don't want to go as hard or, or, or oh, turn this way because yep. I don't want it to happen again. It's, it's not even it's, physical. So I worry about that. You know, because it seems like I've he had everything there. coming together. You know, yeah, the I, American uh, team. I've been there, Jimmy. I smacked a, um, a jersey wall on prom night. <laughs> We were for, like, for like 15 years after that. Like, I would not drive close to the Jersey wall. I'd be all in other people's lanes. But that's, you Yo. know, it's mental. It's mental. <laughs> wasn't he, and it wasn't even your car. I remember that. Yo, it was a Beamer. <laughs> a rented John. But the thing was, the John yeah, held up bro. so nice. Like, nobody ever knew that it really happened until now, until Sean, all these years later, and I got a show, and I'm, and I'm dry snitching on myself. Put out there. <laughs> Yeah, he's snitching. If Sean Livingston can come back from what we saw him come back from, uh, yo. But he was still really never the same, though, B. Austin. He came back, had a good year last year, what have you, but he was never the same. Like, yeah. Sean then Livingston he come back and be, be one of them guys. He'd come back and be breaking his stuff uh. again. <laughs> Sean Livingston, <laughs> stay hurt. No, I, I get what you're saying. Cause Sean, I mean, he's still he, – he's a quality backup point guard in this league. But, like Jimmy supposed just like he said – Sean Livingston was supposed to be a quality superstar point guard in this league. Yeah, he was a lot of people said after that draft be better that than Magic. a lot of people said five to seven years from now, back on draft night, this guy is probably going to be the best player in this draft. Like he wasn't the highest pick in the draft, and he wasn't the best player right away. But long term, he was looked at by many as you know most likely to succeed type of thing. But uh, <laughs> yearbook type job, most likely and, to and, succeed. And the thing that that that's crazy is that since since this the deadline for this was in March and he got approved, his team probably had this plan. Like this Team USA, this World Cup tournament was probably the launching pad of his brand. They probably were gonna push the. That's, uh, that's what I just said. Said Everything was lined up yeah. perfect. Yeah, they're they probably were going to push the announcers to use it, you know, more than they would because it's new. But shout out to the homie Paul George, man. It's a, it's a shame, but hopefully he can come back strong. Um, we know yeah, that the well, Clippers, sure. the Clippers sale has been made official. Sterling still tried to appeal it the day after. Um, he was denied. Uh, I guess this this might be the last thing we get to talk about. We might not even get to the Tony. Let's talk about Tony Stewart real quick. Let, let, we'll, Let's talk we'll about the LeBron and and Curry for for another day. Let's talk about Tony Stewart. Um, we've all seen the video. You know, we all saw what happened. Rest in peace to Kevin Ward Jr. He had his funeral. Uh, hundreds of people showed up. Um, my take, real quick, fellas. First of all, my, my take is more about what I've heard since this went down. I've seen a lot of people on the internet talking sports. I've heard a lot of people, you know, on radio shows and stuff. I think there's a lot of irresponsible messages being sent. And you guys might not agree with me because we haven't talked about this yet. Y'all might think dude is a murderer or whatever. But I I think that a lot of people who've just been blatantly calling him a murderer since day one, like after it happened, I think that's really irresponsible, you know, of them to just label that dude a murderer. And this has come from – people that we work with and whose opinions that I that I trust and, and respect. I, I just thought it, I just think it's really irresponsible to just be calling him a murderer. The circumstances were murky. Everybody just thinks they know exactly what happened because of a video. Well these other cars missed him, so why couldn't he miss him? First of all, it's a dirt track race, it's dark and no instance ever should you jump out of your car because you're upset and run onto the track? How are you going to confront an automobile, you know, as a human being? So, you know, not to, you know, throw any shade on the on the deceased or whatever, but I don't think anybody could disagree that that was a stupid move by Kevin Ward Jr. And I just can't fathom. Tony Stewart, I think a lot of people are making their their opinions based on, some of the asshole stuff that he's done in his past, in his past. But I just can't fathom that he would really see the guy in the street and try to run over the guy on purpose, knowing what an automobile can do with somebody. So I, I don't know what the dude was thinking, but I don't try to pretend to know what he was thinking. So I'm not going to go out and call him a murderer. I'm not going to go out and say I knew what was in his mind, what he tried to do. I just think it's irresponsible of a lot of people, especially professionals, to just go on air or, or write or go on the Internet just calling dude a murder. What do y'all think? Y'all think he's a murderer? 
Well, <laughs> nah. y'all think he's a murderer? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, because we haven't Yo. spoken about it, so y'all might no, no, be like, No, no, we definitely have it. We definitely have it. And, you know, and, you know we always give our honest murder. opinion whether we agree or not. My yeah. thing is this, and, I, and I'll be brief so P. Austin can uh, speak his piece. Um, in the words of uh, Nasser Ben Aludarod Jones, I think he's an accident murderer. Um, I, you know, and, and you just mentioned something that I agree with. People judge him based upon his ash hole his history. And that's par for the course. We talk about it all the time when it comes to a lot of NFL players. Like, when you build yourself as being one way, a lot of times you don't get the benefit of the doubt. Now, with that being said, him getting out of the car was complete. That was that was stupid. I mean, it was a comedy of errors. It, it was it was ridiculous. Like you know, um, it was deplorable. Um, in the words of a uh, uh, Brandon uh, B. Pemberton, you know, it was malarkey. <laughs> like you don't you don't get out of the car. Like that that was stupid. When I first saw it, it looked to me. Now at the end of the day, the only person who knows what was in his heart and whether he did it is Tony Stewart, and he'll never come clean, even if he uh did even do if it. He did it, on it looked to yeah. me like it looked to me like he was trying to get close and possibly scare him, be a smart ass, and. Dude, like, just kept coming toward, like, dude, walking. dude, like, yeah, he kept walking. yeah, like, so it ended up being an accident. So I think he's an accident murderer, and I ain't never heard he's an accident murderer. But at the end of the day, his history plays a part in it. But you know, he created that history and he created that brand for himself. I Maybe know, but I think people, I think people have gone far with that because being an asshole and being somebody who's gonna just run somebody down with a car on purpose, that's two different things. I mean, it's true, but I mean, people still it's call level, OJ a murderer. He got this, found not guilty. It's levels to this asshole stuff, man. Yeah, I'm be, saying OJ's been. A, oh, who don't call oh. OJ a murderer? And he got found not guilty in the court of law. He went on trial. <laughs> this is this is what we do. We judge people. Yo, if it don't fit, levels to this. You must have quit. Must have quit. Um, definitely uh, was a heat of the moment thing. Only, you know, God or higher power can believe in that. And Tony Stewart know whether it was his intention to strike the young man, scare the young man, or none of the above, and he just came close. I think that at the very maximum, by the definition of the law, the worst you really could charge, <laughs> excuse me, the worst you could really charge Tony Stewart with is, is some form of manslaughter. Um because it was a, a, a crime of passion, if you will, or whatever, um, I don't think he meant to. He meant to kill that kid. I think that was Tony Stewart being a being a, a, a dork, a dweeb. He may have meant to clip him. He may have meant to scare him. It Damn, clipping though, putting you in mouth. I'm about to say clipping people with cars ain't no joke, man. I, well, yeah, he's I, not I going can't even say he was in a stunt on a dirt on a dirt yeah, track. Yeah, yeah, it was a dirt track. track. So they he's not going, going more than ninety. Yeah, but cars still weigh a lot, man. You ain't trying to clip nobody. Yeah, unless you trying to clip my man. That's what unless you're trying to hurt or kill, kill them, clip. you ain't trying to clip nobody with a car, man. <laughs> I'm not trying to clip nobody yeah. going five miles an hour down the street. And there's a lot of youngsters who stand in my also, neighborhood I agree with you. that, I, I, that you think you know, about asking, clipping. But I agree with you. <laughs> I, I think he yeah. meant to try to, like, scare the dude. Like, I don't think he meant to. I, I don't think he meant to happen what happened. We're, we're totally ignoring the fact that, to be honest, and these dudes in NASCAR do get out of their cars and act silly, but yes, they do. The, the kid do was stupid. out of pocket to get out of his car during a race and walk onto the track. So, for real, for real, he's endangering other drivers and putting a lot of people's lives at risk, obviously including his own. So, think about this. You know, I don't know. Think about this real quick, y'all. Like. Uh-huh. This is this is one of those benefit of the doubt scenarios, but we already discussed how Tony Stewart is not going to get the benefit of the doubt from anybody because everybody makes right. the point, well, everybody else saw him and moved out of his way. How didn't he see him? Think about this. You're coming around the track, dark track. Maybe you see everybody else getting out of the way, and your attention is on where the hell those cars are swerving to. And then you look up, right. and homie's in the middle of the street. That could be a scenario. Right. I'm just throwing them out there. Yeah. Because it's yeah, just, like he, I said, it's I, just irresponsible is, to just call this dude a murderer. It's bottom crazy. line is this. He doesn't get the benefit of the doubt because he has been an asshole. This would say Jeff Gordon, who's considered a nice guy and a good guy, we wouldn't even really be having this conversation. But the fact of the matter is he's, he's built a reputation as being mm-hmm. an asshole. He's the one that ran him off the road to begin with. You know this what I'm saying? Like, so it's like, this is like Theo yeah, versus gonna, Fitzgerald. <laughs> Theo exactly. versus Fitzgerald. Exactly. So it's like, you know, nice but, catch, but this Larry. is the thing. 
Mm-hmm. And this is the thing that, like, I try to impart upon, like, you know, when I talk to to to, to kids and I, you know, try to say the babies and whatnot. Like, listen, this stuff follows you. Like, you have to, you know, I hate to say the word brand, but that that's what it is today. You, you have a brand even as a person. It's outside of athletics, and that follows you. You don't get the benefit. It's like the boy who cried wolf, and you already know that story. Anyway, All man, right. it's time for us to get out of here, man. We'll, we'll we'll rap about the NFL. You know, we're about to bring Phil Vision back. But with that being said, thanks for joining us in the war room, good people. Shout out to everybody in the chat room, those on Facebook and Twitter, all the calls who called and that chimed in. You know, we appreciate all the support. Special thanks to Fred Perdue for joining us to give his Big Ten and Big 12 previews. Tune in next week, same time, same place, right here, or on demand on WRSPN.com. Our NFL preseason coverage continues and a whole lot more. So until then, enjoy your week, and we'll see you right back here next time. Be sure to catch our conversations. That's on Facebook, Twitter, uh, as well as Instagram. Everything is at War Room Sports. You can find us all over the Internet. Shout out to Al Gore. Our videos can be found on WarRoomSportsTV.com and all of our network shows. That's WRSPN.com. Until next time, everybody, don't accept mediocrity. Be steadfast in the war against ignorance. And we'll see you chumps on top. www.warroomsports.com What? Ain't no more to it.